Hello, I am Daniel Bloodworth. We are Easy Allies, and this is the Easy Allies podcast. This week, I'm joined by Michael Huber. Dude, The Rock is unhinged on Monday Night Raw. Okay. It's out of control. Michael Damiani. Uh... Uh, uh, wow, the rock. Uh, oh yeah. yeah, you said the rock. Dude, was he dropped back. an f bomb but, and like a, t- and it was like there was like a backstage brawl. It was amazing. Okay, rock. Yeah. <laughs> wow, surprised. <laughs> Making it all happen in the control room. We've got Isla Hink. Hi. Gabby's back there watching us. Gabby's there. She's Don's on the way. He'll some be some kind of later. wretched tartine. What is that? He was finishing a uh, skull and bones raid. <laughs> His car, his car's in the shop, I'm unfortunately. Kidding. But yeah, by car you mean his his ship. <laughs> his ship. Yeah, he's got to he's got to put some more tar on the side. Yeah. <laughs> uh, friends, we're here to talk about what's new, what's news, and what we've been playing this week. It's our spring game preview. Going to be looking ahead at a bunch of different games coming out through April, May, and June. Huber got an early look at that Stellar Blade demo yes. that's coming out soon. I've been playing Pepper Grinder and Princess Peach Showtime. Uh, and, of course, there's another Marvel game, this one that looks like Overwatch. Uh, so we'll talk about that a little bit, too. Looks pretty cool. Uh, yeah, so there's a lot of games to get through, uh, and we don't want every episode to go to four hours. So <laughs> we're going to get things started with April. I'll keep the Dodgers and wrestling talk to a minimum. Okay. <laughs> Uh, reminder, we're not going to do an exhaustive discussion on every single thing. Uh, some games will just drop titles and keep going. Some we might have just skipped altogether. Uh, just focusing mostly on what people want to talk about. Also, panel, don't forget to pick your sizzle and your fizzle for spring. Oops. Sizzle's a game you're really looking forward to. Maybe an underdog, something a little bit unexpected. Underdog, good, 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 good. And your fizzle is a game that might be fine, but you're a little, little shaky. Could go either way. Sink or swim. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> uh, first up, uh, one uh, Huber. I, I hadn't really been looking uh, necessarily at that much, but uh, Saviorless yeah. on April 2nd. Oh, you have the trailers. Amazing. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah. So this is a <laughs> side-scrolling adventure game. They call it a dark fantasy 2D platformer. Yeah. Uh, it... I put I put the initials on this one. I, I was curious about this one because I think it could go either way. Mm-hmm. It looks very unique. I'm always down for 2D side-scrolling action, Metroidvania, whatever you want to call them, whatever genre they fall under. I love these types of games. I, I always like to have one kind of in the rotation or like rotation adjacent yeah. to kind of ba- balance against like the big... 3D, you know, triple A, quadruple A, whatever, <laughs> whatever. Yeah, search um, behind every cupboard and all of those kind of games. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Just something that is like immediate. You know, you can just jump into and play. Um, and like the cutscenes really st- uh, stuck out. Like the just the imagery of this this yeah. trailer, um, and the enemy types as well. I was like, I was like, that enemy looks cool. Oh, that enemy looks. Cool. Oh, what yeah, are you, you get some freakos in there. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, you're just character running around with like a like a plain dress. The, the color palette of the gameplay itself is kind of muted. Mm-hmm. Kind of reminds me a little bit of like where the wild things are. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, there's one part where you're like standing on top of like a robot, and there's like these like piston things smashing out from the yeah. sides. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's it's, it's interesting. Yeah. Uh, Could go either way, but but I'm I'm intrigued. From the uh, descriptions, they say players will have to piece together a broken narrative and a unique storytelling approach while exploring the atmospheric world of Saviorless. Cool. Uh, been in development in Cuba uh, for the past seven to eight years. Wow. So yeah. Seven eight years. Wow. Okay, now I'm rooting for it for it even more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> cool. Uh, some. Some quick shots before we get to the next uh, one for Huber. Uh, April 3rd, Deceit 2 is coming out. Pathless Woods is coming out. April 4 is Buckshot Roulette, which was, like, disturbing. It, even for me. This yeah. one's a little disturbing. Yeah. 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 Uh, Pathfinder, Gallowspire Survivors, Turbo Golf Racing is hitting 1.0. Then on the 5th, yeah. another Huber joint, Sons of Valhalla. Dude, this is my sizzle blood. Yeah? I... Ooh. I yeah, everyone knows I like Vikings, whatever. But that's not the only reason I'm hyped on this game. I love like the pixel art look of this game. Yeah. 
the entire premise I'm so into because it's like a base building game. It, like it looks like there's so much depth to it, but also it looks really accessible. So this like nation or this rival like Viking crew comes in and like burns your village down, kidnaps like your wife. Mm. So you have to like seek revenge and go like rescue your wife or uh, wife or whatever, and then like take out their. Dude, they had a like, bear chained up. Yeah, there's like bears. In it. This trailer is <laughs> awesome. This, uh, this game looks so cool. Yeah, the reflections they had in the river were pretty cool, too. Yeah, I think it's made from, like, two people, too. Mm. Like, two guys have been working on it. Um, so, But the premise is you build up your base, and then you go out to other bases, and you can, like, raid them for supplies and come back, or you can try to full-on capture their base. Okay. And Player bases? Huh? Other player bases? No, single player. Single oh. player game. Yeah, yeah, single player game. So then you 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 take over the uh the enemy bases and then that gets you further, you know, then you, then you can launch your attack from there to try to get to like the the final area or whatever. Got it. Um combat is action oriented, you know, side scrolling. You're actually like out there, you know, swinging your sword, using your your bow and arrow. Um and it just yeah, it just seems really cool, really addicting. Like I'm I'm ready for that game. I'm Hoping it's cool. Uh, again, they, like you nailed it with the the underdog vibe of the sizzle. So yeah, this is the first time I heard about this game, and I was like blown away by that trailer. I was like, dude, this sounds awesome. Yeah, you can you use like catapults and stuff to like destroy enemy bases and stuff. So it looks cool. Yeah, it sounds like it won't be huge either. So they say the campaign features six levels. Perfect. And then they've got an endless uh, horde style mode. That's fun. To that, so. Perfect. Yeah. The yeah. way you said earlier, uh, burn their village down, you made me think of Robin Hood Men in Tights. <laughs> when, when Anytime they make a Robin Hood movie, they burn our village down. <laughs> <laughs> God, I've not seen that in a decade plus. I, yeah. I need to. Yeah. <laughs> uh, April 9th, uh, there's Botany Manor, which is like a gardening sim. Uh, Gigantic is coming back uh, with the Rampage edition. I'm curious to see how that'll pick up after like so much competition has come out. Mm. Have they ever used the Pixie song "Gigantic" in one of their trailers? Because they're, <laughs> they're missing a trick, if not uh, missing out. And then uh, that same day, April 9th, "Children of the Sun" from Devolver. This crazy game. Yeah. So you're like this, is, like you've escaped from this cult, and now yeah, you're dude. going back to get revenge. Follow the bullet. Uh, and you have a sniper rifle. Oh, this one. Follow one the bullet, dude. Bullet. Yeah. No? <laughs> uh, the one shot game. Yeah. And but she can like bend it with her mind and like go from like target to target with the same bullet. And so it's like a sniper puzzle game. So cool. Yeah. Looks awesome. Uh kind of curious like you have like mind stamina because can I like, like just like circle the there's got to be a limit yeah. around until to like figure out like all right well, let me go over here now all right and then just circle around here and I'm sure pattern. there's some kind of limitation yeah, yeah I know they had a demo be. not that long ago so I'm sure some people have seen how the, the yeah. mechanics work so. I would imagine too the bullet starts losing speed so maybe it can't go as far after you yeah that eat, could be. for each person you take out. There's only so much you can do, like from the momentum to like picking the right spot. So durability yeah. on it too, like it loses like yeah. you know integrity with each. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, maybe you have to like plan grim. out who you sh who you shoot in which order. Because if some guy has like a helmet or whatever, right? Oh, what a violent but cool idea. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I just get blown away by, especially indie games, just continuing to give us experiences that we have not done yet you know yeah. it's like 2024 you'd think they'd run out of ideas with video games it's like now you're just controlling this magic bullet it's like, all right cool. right <laughs> let's go um next up is one that i i don't know a lot about but uh broken roads out on april 10th uh this is an isometric rpg mm -hmm. uh set in a post-apocalypse australian outback humor Dang. mad max yeah yeah uh, oh there's got to be an easter egg yeah, I'm sure there is. 100%. There has to be. 100%. Uh, so turn-based combat, uh, they say meaningful philosophical choices, uh, and quote, a classless system offering near unlimited character development options built around four philosophies. Crazy. Humanist, utilitarian, Machiavellian, and nihilist. 
Uh, and it sounds like uh, I'm listening. Yeah, it sounds like they are going for that disco Elysium. Mm-hmm. Yeah, itch. fully. Yeah, or you know, old it's, school it's Fallout in Australia. Disco Elysium Fallout tactics. Yeah, <laughs> this game looks hard core. <laughs> disco Elysium rough Fallout and Baldur's Gate are referenced in their own trailer. That is hilarious. <laughs> yeah, it looks, looks cool. incredibly hardcore. Settle into this game. Get your calculator out. You're doing, you're doing some math. <laughs> uh, that same day, uh, Erebon Shadow Legacy, uh, which I pulled up a trailer from like a while back because the newest trailer was like only like 37 seconds long. Mm. Uh, but you might remember this. This is in some showcase uh, a while ago. It's a stealth game. Yeah. Uh, but you can like merge with the shadows. So cool. Uh, Reminds they, me of Origami and Mark of the Ninja a little bit. Yeah, but they even compare it to like Splatoon. Nice. So we're like, because like you, you kind of with going into the shadows, it's sort of that technique where it's like you dive into mm. them and like move around and then pop back out. So you kind of like put that into your repertoire with the stealth mechanics. Yeah, yeah there, you so can see cool. it in there, like going up walls and everything too. Wherever there's shadow, you can kind of travel into it. So cool. Because you have like, you know, you're like the last of the clan or something like that that knows this technique, the shadow. Forbidden shadow jutsu. Technique. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and then uh, the only other thing I wrote down is uh, that like they say that like part of like the resource collection and the upgrades is like you can build like high tech gadgets and stuff. So I'm curious like what that means in terms of like, you know, what kind of other, you know, tools that you have in your, your pocket to, mm-hmm. to play around with the guards and stuff. But it's kind of weird that this is like coming out right around the corner because I just feel like we still haven't seen a whole lot of it other than this kind of proof of concept early Definitely. level stuff. Um, but should be cool, hopefully. Yeah. Makes you wonder about uh, just marketing budgets and stuff, you know? Yeah. Just games almost coming out. Haven't heard much, but yeah. Uh, Inkbound is also coming out on the 10th. On the 16th, Grounded is coming out on PlayStation and Switch, and it's getting a big update on Xbox and PC as well. Nice. Uh, and then on the 16th, yeah. we're finally getting Harold Halibut. Uh, if you don't remember this, this is oh, the stop-motion yeah. uh, adventure game. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, this looks crazy. Looking yeah, Damiani, game. you'd put your name down on this one. What are you... Uh, what are you thinking about this? I did. <laughs> oh, I know. I, I actually forgot no, too. Did. Sorry, but now that I see it, like I'm like, oh yeah, this, this. I mean, a factory you're able to like play this, yeah. and see this, you know, in real time, not just like watching it. That's like insane. Yeah. And then like just the concept of like a giant ship, you know, like with the whole city of people inside a ship. That's like, what is it meant for? I'm reading. It was meant for space, but it's actually in. In an ocean, yeah, it's like it's like, like sunk on an, an, an alien yeah, planet, like sunk yeah, under the ocean in some alien world, yeah. There's a so you got it. You kind of got me hooked a little bit on that. You know that concept. That's a fun. There's a, that reminds me of a really good Futurama joke where they're like going underwater really deep, and he's like, "We're we're we're hitting like." 200 atmospheres of pressure and they're like well how many can the ship withstand and he's like well it's a spaceship so i'd say anywhere between zero and one (laughs) that's great um yeah if you if you're not familiar with the development process on this too like like they literally did like sculpt this stuff out of clay and then scanned it into 3d um so that's why it's an incredible methodology Yeah. Like, if Guillermo del Toro doesn't know about this game, <laughs> someone needs yeah. to tell him get immediately. It, get it in front of Kojima. Yeah. And then Kojima will get it in front like, of Like, we Toro. need the del Toro take. Because <laughs> the animation is, like, so smooth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And their facial expressions and stuff. Oh, my God. Yeah, and it it's fully so voice good. acted, too. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm God. very, very curious to see this full thing. I know some people have uh, just recently put out some previews as well, if you want to get some more. Nice hey. info. On the Steam page, it says you'll like this if you like Stray, Banishers, and Death Stranding. So okay, <laughs> <laughs> well, all right then. Three very different games. Yeah, what Banishers? That we all like. Yeah, that's that's so weird. Cool. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Pretty cool. <laughs> uh, also on April sixteenth, we have Life Eater, <laughs> the horror fantasy kidnapping sim from uh, Strange Scaffold. Uh, Zalavir Nelson, same team that made El Paso Elsewhere, Sunshine Shuffle, uh, Airport for Aliens currently run by dogs. Some cute games there. Uh, yeah, so some some craziness here. You're like 
stalking people and kidnapping them in service to a dark god that will destroy the world if you don't do what he says. And so it's like you're basically a, a kidnapped person kidnapping other people. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, I haven't like seen like a, just a straight gameplay to understand like how the mechanics work, but it looks like there's like timelines and things where you're like monitoring and stalking people and finding the right time to go and, <laughs> and abduct them. And then there was a thing where you're like clicking on organs in the trailer too. So Organ trailer? Yeah. Well, <laughs> it, he also did uh, Space Warlord organ trading. Organ. I forget all the Space Warlord <laughs> organ something simulator. Maybe it is trading simulator. Um, and then I know that they have like the same. Space an- Warlord organ trading simulator. It is trading. Okay. Uh, there's an anatomical heart that they've been putting in all of their games for whatever reason, is an Easter egg. It's <laughs> the same anatomical Okay, art. that's cool. Um, but, uh, yeah. Yeah, I just, I love I love their studio philosophy. The games are like, I feel like almost like every other one. It's like, oh, I like that one. Not so into this one. <laughs> Next one, oh, that sounds cool. Yeah. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> so, but, uh, yeah. Interesting, one way or the other. Yeah, crazy concept. Um... April 17th, there's a game called Kingsgrave and another game called Ranio coming out. But then on the 18th, Damiani, Final Fantasy 16, The Rising Tide. Wait, of April? Yep. Holy moly. Oh, yeah. Holy moly. I feel like we can't let Kingsgrave go by without making a Kingsglaive reference. (laughs) Go for it. Visual nightmare. (laughs) Visual nightmare. Oof. Visual, visual chaos. Visual chaos. <laughs> visual chaos. Insanity. But Damiani, you watch that anyway. PAX panel. Tell us what what do we need to know about Rising Tide? Yeah, so they 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 basically showed off pretty much what it's going to be. Um, it's set in Missidia, Dissidia, um, which is Missidia with an M. Uh, it's a location that's in Final Fantasy IV and also Final Fantasy II. I forgot about that. Because when they were showing it off, I was like, oh, yeah, it's an FF4 nod. And they're like, don't forget, it was a town in, or a con- continent in Final Fantasy II. I was like, oh, I forgot about huh. that. But uh, the, the big thing is, Huber, it is running, you know, like concurrent. They're doing the concurrent yeah, thing yeah, again. Yeah, yeah. So it's not like after, it's not before. But, uh, but it's set in a different location in the north where the sky is all like blue this and thing, stuff. This yeah. thing, but I was always wondering what the heck yeah. was going on with that wave over there. Yeah. Okay. Looks so sweet. Dude. Yeah. So you are being sent there to investigate like what like what's going on like the loss like the capture or the loss the loss of the the Leviathan dominant mm. and yeah you're you're so it's like a whole big like kind of like extra story chapter essentially Hell yeah. uh, like they showed off all the environments it's you know it it's pre- looks like it's going to be pretty significant I heard the so biggest I, news about this game Damiani the biggest reveal is that mm. if you finish both of these DLCs, mm. you have to finish both. You get like yes. some special epilogue quest. Yes. Oh. Okay. okay. So it's That's not heard, necessarily dude. epilogue quest. Something. So there is a new. Uh, what's it called? Uh, there's a new thing they're adding into the game because there's also a patch coming mm. that day, version 1.3. Mm-hmm. Um, and there is this uh, kind of like a uh, like a. A roguelike mode being added oh, where it's sick. like 20 floors oh. that you got to like complete every five is like a boss Dude. okay um and if you beat you have to unlock it you have to complete like uh like you have to be at a certain point in the game again before you can do it because i'm get, imagine some of the f- bosses are probably spoilers if you haven't done right. them mm-hmm. but if you beat it on final fantasy mode or the hardest mode or whatever all 20 of them with the best ranking you get a special twenty first like super secret ultra boss they're touting. Oh god! And they're like, what? they're like, they're being like, yo, we like, you ask for hard stuff, you better not complain. Like, <laughs> 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 so they, they issued a challenge, dude. But you have to replay so, the like, whole game. Yeah, yeah. um, they, 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 they're adding like, uh, like they said, like about forty new or like music roles in the game. They're called the Kestrian yeah. roles. They're adding more like photo mode stuff, so you can like do like tone correction, screen effects, uh, completely customized controller layout, however you want. It's okay. being added finally. Um, they're adding loadout stuff, so you can save stuff. <laughs> they're adding more slots, so you can okay. do like loadouts. So I was like, all right, there you go. Um, and then like the important side quest, Huber, they're getting new quest like uh, icons. 
to de you know delineate that they're different from the other one. So players would be like, "This is an important one. Really focus on that oh, one." Oh, so I see what you're saying. People who don't like mm -hmm. the fetch that's ones smart. can like just avoid those. And then when they get to a one, it's like, "Yo, this is an important one. You should probably." These are the ones I've been like hearing about. For do tones. those ones. Give mm -hmm. that a different color. And yeah, so they're doing like a few like quality of life uh, updates as well at the same time. So the the base game is getting this new additional content, Hell this yeah. new like roguelike mode. And then you have this, they didn't say how many hours so pretty much. this was going to be, this new DLC. But I mean, Echoes of the Phone was like maybe a few hours. This has to be like, this looks like it's. Yeah, I want to say it was it, like it's a whole five new or area. six for so, Echoes of the Fallen. Yeah, and this is a whole new environment, like a new part of the world. So, Badass. yeah, I'm not, uh, yeah, not, I'm not sure what to expect. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if it's like around maybe ten hours, but yeah, and it's gonna be focusing on Jill because it's going to Jill's hometown yeah. and like in the north. So you're getting a lot more uh, Jill, um, you know, yes. story stuff there. Yeah, so I'm a little yeah. weird with you know, kind of like with Huber. Like, I'm a little weird with them just trying to jam another chapter of stuff that supposedly happened in Should the middle of the story. Should have waited, dude. You're going to enjoy the game so much more if you if second. you play it now. But <laughs> it's just so much better. Like They just, uh, they just press release to spoil me. You get or music from Final Fantasy fourteen as a special bonus item okay. for buying it. So I'm, I'm getting the songs they say. I'm like, okay, so those are probably going to play there in the book. I was like, okay. I mean, it was probably expected, <laughs> but that's fine. I was just like, like the mystery of like, is are they gonna play it? When are they gonna play it? Do you think it? anybody spoils is. their own games more than Final Fantasy? No, they. <laughs> Maybe I mean, Resident Evil. The, the trailers <laughs> for Rebirth, but like the fourteen team is notorious for like keeping shit nice. secret. Mm. So That's like dope. this, I'm actually surprised. I think they're only saying this because we. Pro I think everyone expects a version of the, the Leviathan theme Leviathan. to be in Leviathan. this, but. It's not going to sound the same. It's always going to be a new version, and how crazy is it going to sound? Yeah. yeah. Sick. Yeah. No, I mean, what was in that trailer looks really good. Like, I'm looking forward to checking out that new area. It's just, same, dude. Again, it's just it's that weird totally. thing. of. But, but what they said, they really were like, yo, if you beat both, you do get, like, some yeah. thing, and it's like, will that feel mm. like it's really tying a bow on this, yeah. or will that I also, also like, feel super enthusiastic in? about Echoes of the Fallen? Mm -hmm. Do you have an image of the Tonberry yeah, oh that you're going to be God, fighting in this? Dude, so sick. Have you seen yeah, the Tonberry? Unfortunately, I've seen it. The I wish I did. Most disturbing. They're like they literally just like a FromSoft developed Tonberry. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> awesome. It's oh my so God! Awesome. And there's like Don't four. Spoil like it. it's. Oh God! It looks sick. I mean, like the, the panel like spent like ten minutes on <laughs> oh, it. Oh, funny. Like, they were just talking about the making of it. It's like, oh my <laughs> God, the thing is going to be d disturbing. So, yeah. th but that's funny to me because I feel like that's part of the the. The thing with the Tonberry is it's like it doesn't really look like it's that threatening. Totally. And then all of a sudden it's like, what just yeah. <laughs> <This> <laughs> is a menace. <laughs> and also, yeah, you get they showed off the Leviathan icon powers. It's like more of a ranged yeah. thing. Like it's like a gun. So it's gonna be like Odin's weapon where your sword will just transform into like a hand cannon type thing. And yeah, it's it's a range type weapon. It's kinda cool. Nice. The same day. Uh, no rest for the wicked no is hitting the uh, wicked. early access. Money don't grow <laughs> uh, and uh, I, I I shared uh, you know some thoughts on this early demo I got to play on the podcast a couple weeks back. Uh, but I really have been digging this game so far. I really like a lot of the things that they're saying. You know, like like really like trying to like hit home those like player friendly beats of like. Yeah, it's not going to have player microtransactions. Beats. You'll be able to play it offline, single player, if you want to. You know, although there is like you know multiplayer if you if you want to go that route too, um, and all you know handcrafted levels and everything, uh, you know, and the game is just gorgeous. This is from uh, if you're not familiar, this is from Moon Studios who did the Ori games. Ori, and yeah. it's an action adventure game, but it's like they're trying to make like their ultimate vision of an action adventure game. So it like blends in like stuff from all kinds of other other games. You know, there's some Souls elements in there. There's a little bit of Diablo in terms of like the way that the equipment works and how you put your gear on, um, but there's also just like a huge emphasis on exploration and lots of like vertical spaces and easy to miss spots and like yeah like I, when I would die in that demo, I would like take a slightly different path and then see all the stuff that I just totally missed. Cool. Just in this first little beach area. So, how does combat look? 
The combat is is nice. It's it's similar to Souls in the sense that it's like it's pretty deliberate and it's like you've got a couple of swings and then you kind of have to like you know back off and you have yeah. to look for dodges you know, and when your opponent is stuff. open and all that. Um, I don't think it was emphasizing uh, parries too much, but like you can see here, it's like you know guard to kind of like stagger a guy and and that kind of thing. So hmm. sweet. But yeah, yeah, I like the look of it. Definitely more detail uh, if you go back to that podcast before when we talked about it. Yeah, it looks really cool, bud. When I when I could remember more of what I did, <laughs> I spent a good while trying to get that that big first boss too. That nice. boss was gnarly, uh, and I was like running out of healing items, and I'm like, hey, how well, how am I gonna? If I run out of healing items, where can I get more? <laughs> can I have that that bloodborne early bloodborne dilemma? Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Farm those blood vials. <laughs> yeah, dude. It's a privilege. It is. It is. Oh, I got to farm blood vials? Cool. Yeah. <laughs> uh, also, that day is Scare Ritual. Uh, and yeah. then on the 23rd... I played the original of that, but I didn't finish it. Made of Scare. Mm. Yeah. Isla, a Uden yes. Chronicle. 100 Heroes finally Aha. here. Here's the deal. I'm excited for this game. I'm a little nervous about this game. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, I'm gonna block my face if I do that. Okay, I'll just do that. Um, I love Sweet Code and One, Two, Three, and Tactics. Um, my memories of the others are a little sketch, but they're probably good too. But One and Two are like my favorite games. Yeah, Rip, Mariama for sure. Um, this game is a, a spiritual successor, you know. And it uh, involves bonds of a lot of bonds of friendship and a lot of that kind of stuff. But yeah, it's about collecting the presumably 100 heroes. Uh, the little demo I played had a village and the vibes were so good in the village and the characters and they're kind of like chatter to each other. The thing that has me a little bit nervous is uh, the dungeons started to feel a little repetitive and mm. the um, combat, you know, it's random encounters that just kind of happen out of nowhere, you know, very old school. Right. Um, which in a, like, preview setting, you know, you're kind of like, oh, I got to get, you know, I got to get to the boss, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Um, if you're settled in, you know, it might not be so, they might not feel so prevalent, but... Yeah, I think it'll be good. I don't know. It seems like, you know, the, the spirit is right and the vibes are there. So I'm, I'm really hopeful. I don't know. Yeah, I haven't uh, gotten a chance to play the Suikoden games, but for everything I've seen from this so far has looked good. Um, and I like the, the just the approach that they're going with yeah. the, the kind of like 2D character sprites on these 3D backgrounds. Um, the the look of yeah the sprite work is really really good and just shout out to this combat style I really love the way Sweet Coden did it where it's like some of these character designs man the shark people oh yeah oh, and the yeah. kangaroo guy and the wolf guy they're all just looking up yeah <laughs> um, yeah there's like different beast races in this which is really cool uh, <laughs> jumping out of the sand is very good um, combat has two rows of three three right, yeah, team yeah. members and you put you input all of your commands beforehand and then they they all execute at the same time and you get like different combos for that and stuff it's really really special i really like the combat in sweet code in uh yep not a huge fan of cute and curious mages though <laughs> well what if i told you you have a hundred characters to choose from exactly yeah. <laughs> exactly yeah, no, there was even something, I think, in the VO in that part, Huber, which is, which is really funny. Uh-huh. I just said, like, stop. <laughs> this is hilarious. Um, dude, I didn't know there were, like, mini games too. What? It's an RPG. Oh, yeah, dude. Yeah. <laughs> you could play, like, b- Cup and Ball or whatever no on the dock since we couldn't. Uh, yeah, it's good. Obligatory Hot Springs. Nice, The nice. main character looks so much like the I- main character of 2. Identical, it's dude. Identical. Even, like, the color of his outfit. <laughs> It's bonkers. <laughs> um, also that day. That game, no, that game needs to be good. We yeah, Society I, I needs hope, it to be good. good. Yeah, I hope yeah. so. Yeah. I really hope so. Yeah. Uh, this one's for Don. Uh, Don couldn't be here to, to really talk about this, but he's going to probably check this out at some point. His uh, boat's in the shop, you know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, They're adding some more bones to his skull. Lunar Lander Beyond 
Uh, this is an interesting project. Atari's been doing a lot of these kind of like reboots, reimagining kind of things. Uh, and uh, this is like the team that did Chris Tales. Hmm. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, and they're like all these crazy elaborate cutscenes and this big story going on for this old school Atari arcade style game. Uh, and so this stuff looks really pretty, but then uh, you get a couple of snippets of gameplay here and there. It's like, oh, that still looks like really, really simple graphically. And like, I wonder, like, yeah, I just that that kind of like back and forth on that vibe. I don't know. Uh, and then because I know that like you also want to try to keep it recognizable in a in a certain way, you know, but. This Atari stuff is so simple that like it makes me wonder if like keeping it recognizable is kind of a hindrance. Yeah. Um, but uh, still, interesting project to have them doing this. Uh, another thing it kind of reminds me of a little bit, Huber, is uh, Pixel uh, Junk. Pixel Shooters. Junk Shooters. Yep. yep. 100%. Yeah, I thought of that too. Uh, yeah. That's exactly what I was thinking. Uh, guide your crew through taxing missions to deliver cargo retrieve resources, and rescue stranded pilots as you navigate a mysterious universe of moons and planets. Um, yeah. Cool. So we'll see. Uh, see if Don gets to play it, what he thinks. Yeah. If Don is uh, intrigued, that's good. I yep. love when Don, Don is intrigued. <laughs> he finds those gems, those hidden gems. I almost love it more when he's inexplicably against something. Yeah, that's <laughs> just as when good. When you're like, this is Don Bait, and then he's like, I hate this. Yeah. You're like, what? Yeah. <laughs> like, is this a bit? <laughs> yeah, you never know if it's a bit or not. Also on the 23rd, we, I, we're basically getting one for just about everybody on this day. Uh, Huber, Phantom Fury. Dude. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a prequel to Bombshell, a yeah. game I notoriously despise. Oh my god, I remember how much you hated that. <laughs> also yes. related to Ion Fury. Uh, yes. Yeah. Forgot about Ion Fury as well. <laughs> uh, 3D Realms, you know, they are masters of the boomer shooter. Yeah. Um, well, Slipgate okay. Ironworks in particular working on this one. Mm -hmm. uh, I love the look and the vibes and the, the pace of this. Uh, this this trailer just spoke to me. Uh, you know, it spoke to 14-year-old me in my parents' room on their <laughs> computer. Uh, just, like, I love the idea, you know, people, they do this all the time nowadays, just with, with old-school retro games, but you make a retro game now, and it has, like, some modernness to it, right. you know? So it just really does feel like this 1990s game being made <laughs> in 2024. Um... And yeah, it, 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 I was shocked that I was so into it because Bombshell is just a terrible game. <laughs> I know it's completely different. Yeah. But yeah, I'm in on that one. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, you can, uh, they say you've got over 20 weapons. Um, you've got her bionic arm mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to uh, toss things around and beat dudes up. And then uh, we saw it in the trailer too, but there's like also there's like helicopter yeah. flying missions. And yeah, stuff that looks in there. sweet. Yeah. Uh, Rumble Club is also out that day. That's another one of those like kind of like Falls Guys ish clones. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, last on the twenty third, uh, Tales of Kinzera Zhao, uh, which uh, we talked about. I played that demo a couple months yeah. back. Yeah. Uh, and really looking forward to this one. Really yeah, looking dude. to see how it turns out. Um, this is the one that's kind of uh, you know kind of African uh, setting. Uh, you play as this young shaman who's just lost his father and and does this deal. With the god of death mm -hmm. um, to uh, to take out these uh, these wayward spirits. So intense, dude. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, you have the two masks. So you have the sun mask and the moon mask, and they relate to different um, sets of like combat combat attacks and abilities oh. that you have. What was that game? Uh, Outland or whatever. We had to like switch your color. Yeah, I, yes. think, I think you're right. I yeah. think Outland uh, was kind of similar that was pretty to that. Fun. Yeah, it was a cool game. Uh, and then uh, the, one of the like last abilities you got in the demo, because this is Metroidvania, uh, was like it allowed you to like freeze water, and then you could like run across like running rivers cool. that would otherwise like push you back, uh, and then you could also like wall jump up waterfalls. Um, and one of the nice things too with Zhao is that um, they give you some like things that are usually upgrades and metroidvania is like right off the bat in that demo so i'm curious if it's the same in the final game because like you could like double jump right away and you could air dash right away and so it's just nice to have that sense of mobility just right off the bat 
Next day, or not not quite the next day, two days later, April 25th, another crab's treasure finally coming out. Do you remember this? You look puzzled. Oh, the crab, uh, crab souls. souls like. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. This looks sick. Uh, this looks yeah. sick. Yeah. So basically, <laughs> underwater <laughs> crab souls. Uh, you play as a hermit crab. You like <laughs> crab souls, dude. <laughs> you, Unreal. You use like different pieces of trash and stuff as like <laughs> shells to protect yourself. So like you can get like soda cans and bottles and uh, bottle caps. You like get different like forks and things to attack with, um, and, uh, <laughs> and and there's a fair amount of like uh, platforming and stuff in it too. So yeah. like you know also like kind of like floating across gaps and all of that. But yeah, so like if if a dude like smashes your your can or whatever you're using as a shell, then it's like you got to find something else. Dang. Or, so the the shell is just gone. Yeah. If you rest at a bonfire, do you get the shell back? Uh, I don't think you get it back. Maybe if you have the one you have, maybe it'll like re-strengthen. I don't okay, remember okay. for sure. Cool, dude. Um, I do remember there was something, there was something in the demo that I played last, like GDC 2023, to where like there were some like hearts or some other kind of health item that were at the top of the cliff next to the bonfire, and the boss fight was down at the bottom of the cliff. <laughs> yeah. And so I was like, go, and I would like. N- like roll them off the cliff, so I basically have more healing <laughs> items than we're supposed to be in the boss funny, arena. Dude. <laughs> so smart. then, when I needed to heal, I'm like, all right, I'll grab that thing I knocked down there. So smart. <laughs> That's cool. You can do that. Yeah. So it's a fun game. So mm-hmm. I'm, I'll be be glad to actually. Who play put their initials that. on this? Uh oh, I just so yeah. So next, who did this? Next this up, Demon joint. Slayer sweep the board. Yeah. Oh, Is it this you. One? I mean, I I, th- I I didn't want to skip it. Skip it. Okay, awesome. So I yeah, put so many it. so many games down. I had I was like, oh, we'll just skip this. One. <laughs> Dude, this looks fantastic. Yeah, this is basically like a Mario Party yeah. Demon Slayer. Yes. Oh, um, <laughs> yeah. Love Demon Slayer. Love Mario Party. Dude, <laughs> sleeper streaming hit right here. So hyped. <laughs> so hyped for this. I don't know if there's anything else to say about it. It's just like, okay, there's different maps from places you know. Yeah. In the story. <laughs> the Mugen Train, dude. The Mugen Train. train. <laughs> so sick. <laughs> so awesome. Yeah. So, good time. We don't get enough board game things. I agree, Bloodworth. That's the best thing you've said all day. Yeah, so, like, Mario Party is so popular, and we see so <laughs> few of these. It's like, even, like, some of the ones that come out in Japan, they don't come here. Yeah. So, it's nice to see Sega bringing this one over. Like, are there mini games though? We haven't seen really any mini games. No, we've seen some. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we need, we need mini games, because there's that other one... That's really big in Japan, but like never really came here, and it like looks like Mario Party, but it's about Fortune Street. Yes, there's been a couple that have come here, but a lot okay. of them haven't. Yeah. Yes, here we go. There's your mini games. Yeah, there they are. There's jump rope. Hot rope jump. There Classic it is. Jump rope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Yep. Yep. So excited. Sharpening the sword is pretty good too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, it's gonna be sweet. But that's that's gonna be part of the fun of it. It's just like, how do you take this like? Very dramatic, serious game, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and make mini games out of Like it. this arc is so insane <laughs> in the anime, and it's like, all right, just, yeah, we're doing like mini games here. <laughs> so cool! I'm very excited. We have to stream this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, I think I've already put it on the yes. the the not necessarily the calendar, but the for our meeting tomorrow when we talk about next month. Perfect. Yeah. Um. Also on the 26th, uh, pools. Pools, we, hell yeah. We talked about this with, with Hip Hop Gamer. Uh, just this kind of crazy, creepy, ultra realistic game where you're mm-hmm. walking around a bunch of pools indoors. It looks good. Yeah. Yeah, it does look good. And um, there's none of that stuff you hate on the water. Yeah. The subsurface, or no, screen space reflections. Screen space reflections. Well, I, there, there might be, but it might be less. Um, it's just not as egregious. The edges well, of the screen because get you don't little have anything armor, yeah. like in front of you in the camera. So, damn it, blood! Well, how do you get to that ladder? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> the chair. But yeah, yeah. This is an inter- yeah, and the fact that you just sit in the chair. There's a take it in. There was a mod for original Doom hmm. that uh, is based on the House of Leaves. House of Leaves. The book, and uh, it, it this reminds me of that. 
Hmm. Yeah, myhouse.wed. Yes. Thank you, chat. Cool. Nice. This kind of gives me that vibes. Am I crazy? Also, shout out House of Leaves. Woo. But, yeah. Like, was there intent to make this game creepy? Yes. Okay. Yes. Because it definitely gives me a creepy vibe. Yeah, it definitely it gets, it gets creepier as it goes further in. Yeah. And then, again, they're saying, like, there's no music or anything. It's just all about, like, the ambient yeah. sound. I want to so. keep going, like, deeper down, and the final pool is, like, in hell. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's there's something going on. Like, you get some, like, like pitch black areas. You yeah. get people, like, walking on walls and stuff. If there, if this game is just is just this for like ten hours, and then it, like at the very end, there's just like some demon beast that appears, <laughs> that'd be horrifying. It's like Blair Witch Project. There's just like a guy in the corner at the yeah. very very end. <laughs> yeah, horrifying. Yeah, I mean this this kind of stuff is so effective, and it just shows like the tools of horror, right? Where it's mm-hmm. like you're gonna freak yourself out way more than anything this game could probably throw at you. Totally. Like you're gonna key yourself up. Yeah, and there's a demo, so... But I think that, I feel like that's spoilers in this case. Yeah, that's what Blood and I were talking about before this, where it's like, wouldn't a demo for this just be the, the <laughs> experience? Like, <laughs> don't play the demo. I don't know, wait for the real thing? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, next, uh, also on the 26th, Sandland. Mm-hmm. Uh, the the uh, anime's getting good reviews. Yeah. It's the first few episodes of the anime, so hopefully this game will be good. Um, I thought it was a review for the game when I saw that on the feed, and I was right. like, oh, oh right. shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but this latest trailer, it, it looks really, really nice. Um, I'm a little I, nervous about this game, bud. Yeah, I don't, I could see it going either way. Yeah. I could see this, I could see this being someone's fizzle for sure. Oh, yeah, actually, I didn't say my, Zao, I think, is my sizzle. Nice. Tales Against Sarah Zao. Hell yeah, dude. Really, really looking forward to that. Yes. Um. But yeah, Sandlin. I don't know. I, I, I'm 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 rooting for it. I'm hoping it'll be good. Yeah, could be maybe average, but still enjoyable too. So. I like that we saw another biome. Yeah, you know, it's called Sandland. All we had seen was sand. I was like, okay, is this whole game just in the sand? But then we saw some like jungle area. Yeah, no, it's like forest literally land. forest land. Yeah, forest land. So okay. cool. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't I don't know why something about it just making me a little nervous. But uh, all the all the tank stuff does look really sweet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's the thing too. It's like a little bit different. It's like you have this vehicle combat in yeah. addition to the on foot exploration mm-hmm. and like crazy mechs. like mechs with missile launchers and everything. Yeah, yeah. We will see. Mm-hmm. And the characters look great. Looks like a cool cast. Yeah, yeah. I think they've really done a good job of like hitting that art style. Yeah, um, it looks really nice in three D. Uh, also on the 26th, but we're going to hold on that for a minute because we're about to talk about it. Stellar Blade. Stellar Blade. So we'll get to that uh, in a second when uh, we, we, we talk about Huber's demo experience. Cool. Uh, but we got one more game before we get to that for April. Yolk Heroes Along Tamago. Have you guys heard of this? Nope. It's been, uh, I, I've seen it like passing through my inbox for a, a while now. Um, but uh, it's finally coming out on the 30th. Uh, it's a retro throwback, uh, original oh, Game Boy style. Yeah. They just announced that they're going to have like all of these different color palettes as if you were like using the Super Game Boy. So they're still very limited colors. But um, but yeah, so it's like it's a play off of uh, Tamagotchi. Only Tamagotchi's. like you're raising a hero and then like training them uh, to then go that out is on quest. Bad ass, dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but very cool. But the best part about Tamagotchis mm-hmm. was how small it was. You could take it anywhere. Yeah. I mean, if this, this is on Switch, I assume. Uh, I didn't write down platforms yeah. for things because there's just so much information to try to put on Steam, here. The, yeah, yeah, like I, I, Steam Deck. I need to. Just, t- I need to take this places. Yeah. I, I, put I, it on the thumb drive. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. But I mean, that was a big draw of having your Tamagotchi in your That's back true. pocket, like yeah. wherever you are. Right. You're having lunch on the on the school school playground. It's like, oh my Tamagotchi, I need to feed Maybe it. Maybe after they're done, we can get a play date version. Yeah, that would be perfect. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the, uh, just put it uh, on a phone. Yeah. yeah. Uh, here's a, a quote here. Uh, your adventure begins as you care for an egg, protecting it from the elements and other wildlife. When your hatchling turns into a hero, you must hone its skills, keep it healthy, and raise it for a grand adventure. 
Train your hero's dexterity, intelligence, and strength through weaponry and study, feed, and bathe your adventurer <laughs> after a hard day's work. And ensure your hero gets ample rest. As an idle game, Yolk Heroes lets players queue tasks. Uh, so even if you close out of the game, your hero will continue to grow. Uh, when your skills are ready, explore the map and enter the realm's dungeons in search of hidden treasures. Formidable enemies await your adventure in the wild, so ensure they're well prepared ahead of their adventures. If your hero, f hero falls in battle, the Fairy Queen will grant you a new egg to raise from a hatchling. So if they go down, you start, start over from an egg. Are there any stats that carry over to the new egg? Don't know. Interesting. Don't know. Interesting. I'm very intrigued, bud. Mm -hmm. All right. Remind me about that. I don't want to miss that one, dude. Remind me about that. Yeah, April 30th. Okay. All right, Huber. Preview access provided by PlayStation. Stellar Blade. Yeah, you play the Stellar Blade demo. You said it's about 45 minutes. It's coming out yep. tomorrow if you're watching this live, but otherwise you should be able to probably pick this up now. Yeah, give it a go. Give it a go. This game is cool. This game is really cool. Um, <laughs> definitely a very horny game, <laughs> as we all know, you know. That's been the talk of this game primarily is like... The horniness. Well, I saw that, like, yeah, you can change the <laughs> suit to basically be, like, flesh-colored, right? Yeah. Uh, but, other, it, but, uh, but doesn't it also make it, like, super hard or something? I did. Oh, that. is it? Yeah, I think I think. Yeah, I, there's, I like a cost, there's, like, a cost for That's making hilarious. it, like, <laughs> extra horny. Yeah. I didn't. So the hornier, you, the hornier you get, the harder it gets? Is That's that funny. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> that was from, like, the leak. Like, it, it slipped out on the PlayStation Store Jesus or something Christ. for a minute, right? <laughs> Uh, really fun game though. I like this game. I'm definitely going to be playing through this game. I really liked what I played. It has like shades of Sekiro a little bit, mm. like kind of like you know if you were to cross like Devil May Cry and Sekiro together a little bit. Okay. Um, obviously it doesn't feel nearly as nice as Sekiro, so let's pump the brakes there. Does not feel <laughs> nearly as nice. Uh, feels really really good though. Parries feel nice. That's heavy, good. heavy emphasis on dodging and parrying. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, from when I first saw it, like, it always, like, gave me, like, those Bayonetta vibes. Yeah. Um, it's only been, like, in the more recent trailers that it looked like, you know, like, like oh, this isn't just, like, a level-based action game. Like, there seems to be, like, a whole big world and quests and all of that. Yeah. Uh, the environments I played were fairly linear. Uh, There's, like, a couple little spots you could explore. Uh, there's no double jump, which felt weird. I kept wanting to double oh. jump. And it, like maybe you unlock that later yeah, on. Yeah, I could see that. Like yeah, a little so. jetpack or something. Yeah, I needed a double jump. Um, but the combat felt good. The stakes were pretty high for being thrown into a demo, not Dude, knowing what the hell is going on. I just thought of another on. stupid thing they could do. Like, what if, like, for, for double jumping, like, if it, like, it, it covered her up more or something, so you have to choose between whether you want to look at her or whether you want to double jump. <laughs> Well, because the physics are so ludicrous, <laughs> double jumping, you know, there's something yeah. there. Uh, but there it is. Oh, that That's hilarious. That's hilarious. That is hilarious. It is. There's there's no okay. double jump. Oh, there it is. There's so the double jump's a skill. That's so funny, the timing yeah. of that. That is hilarious. <laughs> Need that double jump, yes. Because okay. when I didn't have it, I felt, like, so restricted. I was like, ah. Uh, but the combat's cool. You're fighting a little, like... You know, tons of trash mobs that are coming at you, ranging from, like, little insectoid things to, like, bigger hulking things with, like, sharp spikes. Um, and just learning their attacks, you know? Like, I... I it, the the enemy feedback is... is It's really easy to learn, which I, was, which I appreciated, because it was like, okay, this enemy is going to do, you know, a three, three attack, and now I know to, like, block, right. block, yeah, block yeah. that. So, like... Right out of the gate, I was, like, learning the enemy patterns. Uh, the learning curve was nice. I just felt so comfortable playing this game right away. Mm -hmm. um, so definitely a credit to, to them for, for that. Uh, just had a basic sword. There's, like, these beta moves you have. That's you hold R1, and those are the face button attacks. Okay. You know, kind of like 16 or something, Damiani. Uh, managing that meter was pretty tough to get the beta meter up to use those abilities it's like okay i really got to manage these um you couldn't i couldn't fully rely on those but they were very strong uh in turn which i really appreciated uh huge uh, skill tree i didn't really dive into that too much because it was just okay. a demo but i got like uh basically i got a makiri dodge that's that was the tutorial it was, <laughs> it was giving you a skill point it's like use your skill point to unlock this dodge it's basically makiri dodge an enemy is like doing a big 
wind up attack and then your sword flashes and that's when you do like forward and circle and okay. you teleport behind him and you can like, you know, go crazy. Um the same input even. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. The boss was cool. There were two bosses. Oh, two bosses. Um That's nice. Yeah, and then when you beat it, you unlock a another boss it was boss challenge and you you have like a more advanced build. And this is where I was so hyped when I when I went through the demo. I was like, "Oh, this is a really good game." When I played the boss challenge, it was like try a boss with more uh, equipment and moves and everything, so I'm more like leveled up or whatever. Felt the same, mm-hmm. which which kind of you know gave me pause there. You know, I, I was still relying on just like all right, parries, Makiri dodge, manage my beta abilities. Yeah, you know, because when you beat the demo too, it shows like all this really flashy, crazy stuff. Obviously, I played the game for 45 minutes, so I gotta like learn more. But when I fought the advanced boss, the Mechanics and everything felt really similar to what I had already done. So I was like, okay, that might just be me like not fully yeah. knowing everything yet, but I was still like using the extra abilities they gave me and it still felt really similar. So I was like, okay, that's like semi concerning a little bit. But yeah, I was really hyped on it. I'm like semi invested in the story. Again, it was pretty high stakes the way they, they, you know introduce you to the game it's very use any of these guns i've seen guns there were no guns i had no guns i didn't get to use any guns no just the sword um but yeah definitely definitely one to watch dude this game is cool like yeah it felt nice the creature designs they've got are just so yeah cool world like cool mute the music was really good Mm. it was one of these songs was already stuck in my head after like 10 minutes nice um just really flashy yeah it didn't feel as punishing as Sekiro as well, the parries are a lot easier. Uh, there was a story mode and a normal mode. I just was playing on normal. Right. Um, you have your little health flasks as well. There's little campgrounds. That's kind of your bonfires where, uh, you know, you can... Yeah, you, there's I did a, see that earlier. You yep. get some currency that you can buy items with, and and you get skills that you can use to level up your, your grid sphere, basically. Uh, and then you can rest the the campfire, and it says some enemies will respawn when you rest there, so not every enemy. Right, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. You unlock I mean, shortcuts as well. I know that like, you weren't feeling Rise of the Ronin, but they had a similar thing like that too, because yeah. like, their enemies are like marked as leaders. Totally. And like, when you take them out, those guys I like that. won't respawn. I yeah. really like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, definitely on my list. I was very positive when I okay. walked away from the demo, and uh, we'll see how the full package shapes up. You know, if it can uh, surprise me and and evolve, the combat can evolve as you continually move on. That's really my only question now. Um, yeah. Nice. Yep. Good VO2. The main character sounded like uh, Gemma Chan. It's like identical. Mm. I was like, is she in this? <laughs> <laughs> like, what? Nice. Yeah. Um, next up, we're moving into May. Uh, May 2nd. Abiotic factor. Oh, uh, sorry, dude. What's one up? last thing. When uh, I died one time in this demo, and when I died, it put me like right. It wasn't even what on a, a flex. Sorry. Boss fight game, parrying and dodging. Destroy the bosses. And then, yeah. Oh, I only died one time. Well, because I've been playing. I'll probably die 15, pl- 20 times <laughs> per boss. Because I've been playing uh, Jedi Survivor on Jedi Grandmaster, right. and the parry windows on that are in. Sane. So this felt like, oh, nice. Like, easy parries. <laughs> uh, 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 died once on a, on a random trash mob, and it, it picked me up right there. Hmm. So I didn't, like, go all the way back somewhere. I didn't go back to a bonfire. Like, oh, okay. it just, like, you died, continue, boom, right there. So that was, I was like, oh, that's really friendly yeah. for what should be a, a pretty challenging game overall, you know, if you're going, like, Sekiro style here, so... Had to, had to bring that up. Sorry. Nice. No, it's all good. All right. Uh, May 2nd, uh, Abiotic Factor. Uh, this is a online sci-fi crafting adventure game. Uh, you can play solo or team up uh, with up to five friends. So I think this may be one of these things where we like we land it up or something. Nice. Um, it's but like yeah. Half-Life in the car there, dude. What was that? <laughs> but yeah, they say uh, you take on the role of Earth's greatest scientists and must craft ingenious tools and weapons to survive 
Between surviving the dangers of the facility, players will need to get accustomed to their new way of life, carving out a section of the laboratory to call home, this is like and care for their most <laughs> basic survival needs, including cooking, sleeping, and using the quote-unquote facilities. Cool. It's like GTFO meets Lethal Company meets Don't Starve? Dude. Looks I, by just by seeing it. I am in, Isla. Yeah. Seems, Are you in? Oh, for sure. Yeah, Perfect. we'll play this for sure. Good. Fanparty.com. <laughs> which is maybe a real website. The forklift? <laughs> just, kind of just driving off the edge? Oh, man. This looks fantastic. Yeah. This will be... This will be is this early access yet? Is um, this like a hit already on, on the YouTubes and the internet? I don't think it's You guys just barfing in yet, a toilet? But I, I could be wrong. Like, TikTok is ready for this game, Bloodworth. I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure. They are ready. <laughs> <laughs> what is. Yeah, he's setting oh my traps. God, setting up wiring and shit. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so throw Minecraft in there, yeah. too. <laughs> yeah. This game looks hardcore. Planting yeah. potatoes, putting it portals. It does. Uh, it's like, uh, oh, what was that? S- that astro- Astroneer. Right. But it kind of has that feeling, too. Jeez. Like a funnier Astroneer. <laughs> oh, there's a Freako in the lab. Whoa, some net. Dead. There's a lot going on. Yeah, in I love the the vibe of that co- the co-op vibe there with like one person throws the net and the others had like big prods. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whoa, some net. <laughs> <laughs> um, next we have Endless Ocean Luminous uh, coming to Switch, and uh, yeah, this is interesting because I this is not something I expected uh, Nintendo to to bring back. Yeah, Endless Ocean. You know, had a game on, uh, original game was on the Wii, Wii. right? Yeah. Damiani, did you get down with Endless Ocean? Nah. I, I remember Blood playing it at game trailers, I think. Yeah. But, yeah. This was never, I was never really into this, unfortunately. So I'm really doubly shocked that they're bringing this back. But, <laughs> I mean, it's also very Nintendo MO to just, like, revisit some random old game they haven't touched in, like, over a decade. Yeah, and well, also making it multiplayer. It's like what, what? <laughs> yeah, if I remember right, this was like essentially kind of like a second party thing, where it's like the, this other company is, is studios like makes these games, and then Nintendo kind of publishes it under their umbrella. They kind uh. of you know, have a deal worked out. Um, uh. But uh, oh, water structures oh, yeah, look yeah. away. But yeah, this one <laughs> look away. Like, Thirty players. This is a thing that like I'm not sure I'm sold on. Like. Swimming around with a, a couple buddies, cool. Swimming around with like a crowd of people, like I don't know if that's the vibes. Yeah, I want to go for. Uh, also, like these like crazy like mythical creatures and stuff they're putting in there is, is pretty wild. If it feels like they're going on a raid, Bloodworth. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, but there's like this crazy like shark that like l- it looks like is on cocaine or something. <laughs> Uh, and then they have prehistoric cocaine creatures. Cocaine shark, buy, get the rights right now. Yeah, <laughs> the sequel to Cocaine Bear. Agent. <laughs> um, yeah, but still, you know, I I do like a good diving game once in a while. Mm-hmm. Played, I like that you can few. get like actual fact factual information about the fish and stuff too. That's cool. Yeah, that's why it gets a little weird when they get into like the more mythical stuff, but. Um, yeah, will they give a scientific name to the cocaine shark? <laughs> right. <laughs> Cocainus sharkius. <laughs> will there be a Meg? No, I mean, God, with the stuff they're showing, there could be. So, we will we will find out. <laughs> Jason Statham deals. Yeah, is he going to make I, a cameo? <laughs> I'm almost I'm almost convinced that there will be now, Hubert. Like with the stuff that they did put in there. Yeah. Like a like a Meg is such a like popular thing. That, Gotta like, have it. Why would you not? Yeah. Why would you not? <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, if they do anything like Meg two, they also had like jet skis and uh, wave runners <laughs> and that. So maybe he could like get some wave race going there. <laughs> yeah. Get some Don uh, get Don more excited for it. Yeah. Uh, May eighth, uh, Indica. Intrigued. Yeah, Huber. It's it's very interesting that Huber put his name on this because like. I saw this thing a little bit back, and it was like, "Oh, this is just, this is a like, like freak show for me. I'm not sure if I'm into this." Intrigued, and, then, and I Huber's in. Okay, you are a nun on a journey <laughs> with the devil. Oh, this one. Yeah, yeah. dude. Yeah, cool premise. Third yeah. person adventure game uh, that effectively combines uh, exploration and environmental puzzles with a hint of platforming, uh, but it has mechanics like prayer time, daily chores. Sanity meter. Sanity Hell yeah. meter. Oh, eternal darkness. And a, and a handy dandy devil companion. 
Um, they, okay. They come in handy. <laughs> Says resembling an avant-garde film that aims to question societal conventions rather than merely providing entertainment. The I, gameplay I saw of it too, the visuals looked really solid. Like when they were actually moving around, mm. the gameplay itself looked right okay. mouse button to pray. It looked uh. okay. It was she was like walking around, like setting up a ladder, like. Trying to get into a barn area, like it, it struck. L- it struck me as um, from a different trailer. Uh, it struck me as a very low budget game with very big ideas and yeah. a good visual sense. Oh, well put, yeah. Isla. Well put. Yeah, and this is being published by uh, Eleven Bit mm. uh, in uh, Warsaw. So they, yeah, they've been picking up some some interesting games the past couple of years. So. Mm-hmm. They're the ones that are uh, putting out the alters as well. Nice. Well, I think the alters is internal, and then this is like a separate team that they're just publishing for. Cool. Uh, yeah, definitely on my watch list. I'm keeping like one eye open on it, just like sneaking peeks. Like, what are you, what are you, what are you doing over there, Indica? Yeah. <laughs> May eighth, though, not too far off. A little yeah. over a month. Uh, that same day, uh, V Rising is hitting 1.0. Uh, they also announced that they're doing like a Castlevania crossover, which is crazy. So. Sweet. <laughs> They'll do anything with Castlevania except make a new yeah. one. Yep, just right. exactly. <laughs> gonna say that. Uh, we just talked about this on another recent podcast, but May 9th, we're getting Animal Well finally. Oh, yeah. This is another one of those games that it, like looks super cool, but it's also like it's been out, you know, like in the works for a very, very long time. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, hard, hard to define. Uh, but, you know, very cool kind of like neon pixel visual style. Lots of exploration, but not exactly Metroidvania either. But there mm-hmm. is like a, just a huge world to kind of like get lost in and figure out how it all works and where all the secrets are. And this is like, this is one of those games where like, oh, yeah, there's there's lots of secrets. <laughs> nice. So we'll, we'll see if, if people even like sort it all out. Good luck to the guides writers. Um that day as well, Crow Country. Uh, Crow Country, baby. It's finally Dude, here. Those look cool. Crow Country. It's my sizzle, baby. Yeah. Nice. Wow, we, we streamed this a while back. Yeah, we played this demo, and I, I talked to the devs, I think, a day of the devs. Um, yeah, they were there. This game, yeah. It it just feels like the old the olden days, you know? so sick. And I'm, I'm into it. Like, it, it's it's a cool <sighs> yeah, like throwback cool. to... Silent Hill, Resident Evil, a little bit of perso- uh, Parasite Eve chucked in there. Yeah, mm-hmm. well, that, I mean, that's what's interesting about the visual style because uh, the shaders and stuff give it that PlayStation pre-rendered look. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Even though it's like fully 3D with movable camera and stuff. Uh, so it's got a very, very different art style. Just that. like such a cool setting. Like the, the decrepit amusement park vibes are so... Yeah. I mean, like, Silent Hill 3, but, like, it's so good, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and those guys are the guys that did Snipper Clips. So wild. Which I oh. love. That is so funny. <laughs> a hard right turn. Yeah. How will Damiani destroy this one? Yeah, like, <laughs> all right, we need to <laughs> be aware of people who might not follow our instructions. <laughs> okay, camera. Uh, another little indie uh, that I've been uh, on the lookout for for a while is uh, Surmount. Uh, and this is uh, the climbing uh, game where you kind of like spin on the the little little uh, mm-hmm. grapple points. And uh, Jusant. yeah, it's a <laughs> it's a mix of like uh, like Donkey Kong Jungle Climber, uh, but they've got like a mix of of like handcrafted areas and then things that are a little bit more procedurally generated. But then you also like meet different characters and stuff while you're climbing the mountain. Is it co-op blood? There is a co-op. That is what I'm interested in. That is that is what intrigues me for this game. Yeah. So you can play with with somebody else. That is a very cozy town too. Holy moly, I didn't know there was towns in this. (laughs) Towns are really selling me here, dude. Yeah. I and I think there's sort of like a run element to it where like you're trying to get to the top of the mountain and then like you might not be able to make it your first time. I don't remember exactly how that side of it works you know i love my roguelites Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) but yeah pc and switch on the 9th uh then on the 13th isla bait 
I like you didn't put your name on this, but I I feel like this is something you might be into. Is Homeworld yeah. three? Yeah, I just didn't know how how into it we wanted to get, but uh, yeah, Homeworld is really intense and crazy, and <laughs> um, I loved it as a kid. Um, so pretty pretty effectively simulates actually moving in three D space uh, with a spaceship, uh, and you have to um, uh, excuse me, uh, you have to really like plan things out and it's just you know real-time strategy in in three dimensions is uh, pretty gnarly so get your calculators get your get notepads your out yeah, get your notepads mm. out <laughs> yeah the one thing that, that get your graph paper ready to go stuck with me that co-op I, is crazy i didn't know you could play co-op <laughs> yeah there's a new co-op mode that they just introduced a little bit ago um so it's separate from like the main game but it's called war games uh, oh okay I, I mean my friend jack and i play Stellaris, you know, we still hop in there a little bit. Stellaris ne- Nexus is pretty cool. Pride. Neptune's Pride, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you know, I love a good hardcore Spache game. <laughs> you going to hop back into that uh, No Man's Sky update? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. Yeah, there's a big new update they're just talking about, too. Oh, sick, yeah. Yeah. Every, every like... Every, like, four years, I put No Man's Sky back on my PlayStation and <laughs> bop around for, like, two hours. And then yes. What's wild is it feels you. like every four or five months they have a huge, oh, yeah. crazy yeah. new update. Those, that yeah. team is bananas. They're doing so much. I love it. This new one's crazy. It added, like, full-on ship customization, like, ship, like, places you can, like, uh, what is it called? Like, a... Uh, Hard points? Like a like a space stations. It's oh. like big on space stations. Oh, they're finally yeah. adding space stations. Yes. Like mm. player space station? I don't know. I just saw like a little Yo. little blurb about it. That's bananas. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah the the other thing I just uh before moving on, uh with Homeworld Three, the thing that like I won't forget is like the dev diary where they were like Yeah, it's like we had to wait twenty years for technology to catch up. To our to, vision. To that what is, we wanted to make that for this is, game. That is like top three favorite things a dev can say for me. Yeah. I love it. Dragon's yeah, we had to wait for the dude. tech to catch up <laughs> to our vision. Dragon's Dogma 2 is like, having played the first one so much and then playing 2 so much, it, it very palpably, you can be like, oh yeah, okay, I can see what you wanted to do the first time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, it was, so it was like 20 years since Homeworld 2? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Cool. Very cool. I don't think I don't remember the exact date, but it's been it's been a long time. Been a while. Awesome. I was like a teenager playing this. Very cool. Listening to Nine Inch Nails and watching three movies at the same time. Like <laughs> Yeah. On one point five speed, all three movies. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah. The giant ships I remember from that too. Just so massive. Uh May sixteenth, uh Ghost of Tsushima is coming to PC. Oh, uh, there's also ten out of uh, ten. Don't skip. Read only memories. Neurodiver, and then there's Robo Beat, which is like another like shooter that you do on the on the beat, uh, kind of like Metal Hell Singer. Uh, then May twenty first, uh, we just talked about this the other week too. Uh, Paper Trail. You're hyped on this. Yeah, coming out. <laughs> uh, cool little puzzle game. Uh, I confirmed with the devs after this that it is it, you can do the touch screen on the Switch as well. Amazing. So. Oh yeah, this game looks so good. Are you folding things? It's like the Mad Magazine fo- folding puzzle things that you do on the covers, remember? Yeah. Yeah, so basically like everything is basically on paper, but there's a back side of the paper with another image on it, and so you can flip it over in different directions and find the exact fold that's going to like solve the puzzle or make the path forward or whatever you need to do. Um, Laser puzzles already stress me out, but now you bring in this extra dimension of like folding things <laughs> to make them line up. But. What was that four di- four dimensional game that had a name that no one could pronounce that may or may not have ever come out? I want to see Huber play that. <laughs> <laughs> I do not remember. I need to remember. I think it's just an M. But yeah, Netflix is publishing this, so I think if, yeah, if you have Netflix, you can just uh, play it too. So is that is that on like the actual Netflix app or is it like Netflix mobile? I thought you were looking at that one. Miyagakure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Miyagakure, um, yeah, it's on your phone. Yeah, I guess? like that sh- that stuff needs to I don't be know. It's on weird. like Netflix it's proper, dude. Like enough Netflix. What are you doing? Uh, Gabby does it on her iPad. Yeah, I think you can just go so to a tab mobile. on Netflix. Yeah. 
But not she like... She played Tara Neal on her iPad. But I have like my PlayStation and Xbox with Netflix and it's not Oh, I see those, what you're saying. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, no, that would be different. Yeah, because they... I don't know if that they can just play it in the app like that on the yeah. console. But... That's what I want. Um, yeah, because that would be like... Yeah, that'd be like Game Pass having another Game Pass <laughs> on the console. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a little weird. Uh, May 23rd, uh, I, I checked this one out last Summer Game Fest, I think. Uh, Haunty. Haunty. Uh, this is a cool little indie game, uh, top-down, kind of monochrome look. It looks kind of like a... Uh, like chalk, like everything is kind of like on a chalkboard, but it's like chalk. monochrome. I like the way you said chalk. Uh, and chalk. D- different levels um, kind of have uh, different uh, color schemes and stuff. Whoa. Uh, but you play as this little little ghostly guy, uh, and you can actually haunt different uh, things in the environment. Um, and so like grab pillars and move them around or like shake trees. And um, I just yeah, I just got to play for like... I don't know, like 20 or 30 minutes, something like yeah. that. There's a here thing where, like, you grab a ladybug. Uh, oh, yeah, I remember these things where you could, like, these, like, turrets that you could inhabit. Um, so, yeah, it, it'll be interesting to see how many different mechanics they have. Cappy vibes. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was just thinking. Like, Mario Odyssey sort of, you know, it's like, okay, find a thing to jump into and, and see what it does. Um, and then they get some pretty cool like, vistas and things with the art style. <laughs> God, what the pipe it looks awesome <laughs> yeah yeah visually it looks really good especially if you're looking at it in person it's like it's one of those games where like there's a lot of fine detail that gets lost in the video compression yeah uh, i don't think anyone on this planet hates video compression more than daniel bloodworth <laughs> <laughs> um and then also on the 23rd uh damiani we're getting paper mario on the thousand year door yeah one of the greats my sizzle one of the greats giving a new generation a chance to experience a one of the greats probably the best entry i mean the best paper mario game and without a doubt like goes you know toe-to-toe with like super mario rpg in terms of like which one is like the best of the RPG games? I'm gonna say uh, it's and, vastly superior. <laughs> and then uh, Mario and Luigi games, vastly. you know, there've been some really good entries there, but this one's generally considered the, you know, the pinnacle. Um, cited for, I mean, like the combat still continues that like, it's still turn-based, still got like the real-time inputs, so you have to like those, those timed actions, you gotta nail those. The audience thing, that was like the thing, like having an audience, like you're on a <laughs> stage yeah. Yeah, fighting and the audience like gets, booing or they start cheering and it like helps you out which is a really good mechanic um having like all the unique and like your 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 assistant characters like your sidekicks this was the one that probably was like the the best of that i mean you start off with with goombella um you have like a uh what was it uh the babam one miss mm-hmm. The mouse one i forget all their actual names yeah but, like there is also the the shadow being which uh, Nintendo, uh, wild Nintendo back in the day, uh, in, in, in a Japanese version of it, they are transgender, but, uh, the other versions remove that reference. So it'll be very interesting to see if any of the versions, when it comes Who back is? out, what, uh, there is a, uh, shadow character, uh, looking at Vivian. Who in the Japanese text is transgender woman, but in the huh. North American version they removed that text, and there was a bit of a small it's funny controversy how often about that. that. With and Nintendo. we have no idea how they're going to play it this time. But the the thing is, they had really good like characters who had really good backstories mm-hmm. and were designed. Their designs were very unique. Mm-hmm. This is like often cited as like these these the Mario RPG series has just gone to generic with their character designs like all the toads just have different colored like you know tops now and they can't have anything that's more you know distinct and maybe a little wild and crazy and they don't do it also like there's a whole sub story with like peach i mean she's kidnapped but there's like an ai like hal computer that falls in (laughs) love with her and they're like he's like trying to like learn about like love and emotions and like helping like peach you know out and you know out of gems and there's the oh and the paper mechanics like the most famous ones like you turn like a paper airplane fly around like they they've worked yeah, all these stuff. themes in together very well and like each chapter feels like a very good can self-contained story but there is like the overarching plot as well and you just have these characters coming and going and you know 
seeing their stories, you know, through in a chapter, but you know, then they, they play roles later and like, yeah, the music, I mean, and, and obviously like the visuals, like continuing that distinct look that started in paper Mario for Nintendo 64 and kind of like elevating. And now it's getting this, you know, enhanced remaster. If you want to call it remake, whatever it is, but it just looks like it's this fidelity has been cranked up on it. So it's a very expensive game, a hard to get game that has just mm-hmm. never been made available again since its original launch on GameCube back like 20 years ago now. And so it's just been a crying shame that we've never had this like released on like a virtual console standalone online. I let someone now, borrow my hard yeah. copy back in the day and I never saw it again. I don't have mine no. either. I don't know where mine yep. went. So it's like, yep. yo, here we go. I'm, I'm ready for this. And there's so many other things I'm probably like forgetting about this, but it just is so, like, I just think a lot of people are going to play it, remember how great it is. And a lot of new people are going to like rediscover it. And because it's on Switch, you know, just a massive beast of a system with its like install base. I think this is like going to be like a big deal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Gabby, you going to play this? Gabby, you going to play this? Which game? Thousand Year Door? She said probably not. Hmm. Uh-huh. All right. <laughs> also, I honestly, yourself. I've only ever played like a first couple of hours of it originally for whatever reason. So like, yeah, it'll be, it'll be a good time to actually like, okay, let's finally do this thing. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully. Brace yourselves for people just like, crapping all over the other entries though and like being ha- like how downhill it's gone after they play this it's, oh my god yeah. so many videos about paper mario lost its way how paper mario thousand door like, the shows, one on yeah. wii <laughs> like super paper mario was it on wii mm-hmm. yeah, oh that was, that was a completely different bad. well yeah. that had like yeah, that was, was a, shifting between 2d 3d yeah, was yeah, like yeah, its big still. hook but like there was, was also more of an action moment. game yeah yeah there was one funny moment like the writing sometimes hit or miss where they uh make a joke i like to go on video game forums and complain before i play a game was like the one that made like the round it's ahead of its time yeah they made that fun joke. of that but <laughs> wow yeah. i wish it was ahead of its time <laughs> <laughs> true, true, true. still relevant though yeah, still, still relevant, relevant. still yes. relevant very much <laughs> uh not a whole lot to say about this but uh world of goo 2 is coming out Cool. Uh, on the 23rd as well and just like one of my favorite puzzle games world of goo yeah it's like it's always a, a good time yeah mm-hmm. good satisfying puzzle game not a whole lot of things like it and just just feels like oh this just came out of nowhere yeah you know it's like oh you're making a sequel to world of goo and the fact that it's only number two after this long it's like wait well, that's what? what I mean. It's yeah. like it's, it just feels like something that's been dormant totally it feels like it's like something from another era and like oh cool, we're doing this again. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, I'd be down for this. Yeah. Uh, if you've never played World of Goo, it's like a physics-based puzzle with these little blobby guys that you kind of like stick together like connects or something like <laughs> that. Sure. Um, and and try to bridge the gaps so that everybody can get across, essentially. I'm trying to remember exactly how it works and what the goals were, but uh, yeah, it's just something that there's just so many fun little ideas uh, to do in this kind of like mix of like building and puzzle solving. Always visually interesting too. Just fun to look at. Yeah. Yeah, seeing this stuff with like the balloons and the fireworks and just like weird creatures. <laughs> yeah. Good stuff. Uh, the 28th, Multiverses is coming back. Multiverses. It was fun when I played it. Mm-hmm. It was actually this fun. Could be my fizzle, but. Ooh. Like yeah, my, guts, you know. my gut says they will, like, they, like, they definitely are trying. And it might, mm. like, be an improvement. But That's I think sick, I'm applying the fizzle here in, in respects to... Uh, I, 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 I mean, I feel bad saying this, but initially I was like, they made the right decision going dark and taking the game off in line and, and, and trying to make a better version. And hopefully they have a successful relaunch. But now it's, like, high anxiety for me. I'm, I feel like yeah. I don't know. There's so many other good fighting games that have dropped. You're I right. know. And, like... They have like a window here, but like I'm also like, yo, is Switch Two just gonna like drop in the next six months with like Smash Ultimate Deluxe Edition and just like what eat this game's lunch? Dominion? It's like, well, no, because they're gonna probably re-release Smash Brothers <laughs> oh on Switch Two, so it's like, and, and then they'll probably add new characters again. Here we go. It's like that ride begins. Also, I mean, we've had a bunch of Smash Brothers clones come and go in the time, and it's just. Maybe people are like, we just want Smash Brothers. Like, we don't want mm-hmm. another type of game. So I, I don't know. I'm very worried about this. Um, and also the direction with like freaking WB, man. Yeah. Like Zazov is just like, 
murdering things left and yeah. right. So I don't have a lot of faith in this, honestly. That's a very good point. Yeah. What if they put him in as the, guy? <laughs> as the final boss? <laughs> like in uh, was that near where you fought yeah, the executive <laughs> <scenes Yeah. around? laughs> The uh, I mean, the one thing it has going for it is it's what he wants. It's live service. So he's banking on it. Yeah. Multiverses. Mm -hmm. Even the name says a lot. So we'll see. Uh, and then on the 31st, uh, May 31st, uh, F124. I feel like those have been getting like earlier in the year, which is actually kind of good because in the past, like they would come out like halfway through the season or whatever. So, uh, but yeah. Some years I check in on it, some years I don't. Not sure how I'm feeling. <laughs> we'll, we'll see when we get to the end of May whether I want to put that in because those games feel like work. Yeah. They do really feel like work. It's like, all right, I need to do my practice laps and my qualifying and do your crunches. Check everything. Yep. Uh, next up, Pepper Grinder. Pepper Grinder, dude. Uh, this game is not out in May. This is Goaty. something I played last night. Goaty. Uh, nice. Put a couple hours into this so far. Uh, Huber, this is a game that just, it just, it feels good. I know, dude. I'm like ready. Like the feedback and oh the sound and uh, just like the momentum. Are you, is it hitting as hard as the greats of, of the past have hit? Like <laughs> when you first played Hollow Knight or Shovel Knight? Like are you just, do you did you immediately feel like, yep, this game? Um I don't know if are it, we like, on that it, level? I don't know if it like hits quite that hard necessarily. Okay, okay. Because those, uh, those are my expectations, bud. Okay. I have okay. insanely high I mean, expectations I, yeah, for this I was game. Say, yeah. My expectations are is it like better than the the Ori drilling parts, you know, maybe not a whole game that's like insane like, yeah. you know, I mean, it, because the demo I played, I'm like where is it going to go from there for 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 this? Whereas mm -hmm. Ori had some like really good uses as well. So I'm like can they at least outdo a game that only uses a mechanic for one part of the environment? Yeah, I mean that's essentially like what the main mechanic here is with the with the drill is is like that that Ori mechanic, um, and so yeah, you've you've got the the drill, so you've got your jump button and you've got your trigger for the drill, uh, and once you're actually in the soft earth, um, you don't soft have to hold down earth. the trigger. Yeah, uh, soft it'll keep spinning earth. on its own. Get used to that because it frees up your hand. I feel like because there are a lot of buttons you have to hit. I feel like. Yeah. Um, but there's like also like lots of like hidden areas like on the screen I can kind of see that like brittle spot down there. Yeah. And it's like it's yeah. once you know what it looks like it's not that like hard to spot but it's also just a, ma a matter of like where you're looking. You know it's like yeah. you're not always looking for that and it's like oh wait there's a secret over there. So sick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, if, and it feels really good to go through that stuff. Um, and then like I feel feel like um, oh yeah and there's this thing too where if you hit the the jump button when you're coming out of the dirt you kind of get like this boost and you see kind of like that blue flame going off of it but then there's stuff like this here too where it's like yeah you can like kind of like swim around underwater with it um, and there's uh, we've got these beetles here and it's like okay their their backs are too hard so you can't Get them from above. Love that. So you got to get the soft belly underneath. The soft belly in the soft earth. <laughs> um, and there's uh, there's also a, a boss fight with like a huge beetle later, uh, Huber. Yeah. Where like you got to get under it. You've got to well, you've got to get them to the right spot. Like you've got to wait for him to like get all the way, like walk around in a circle. So where he's like on the ceiling. Yeah. Because there's a guy on his back shooting at you. <laughs> awesome. Uh, and then. <laughs> And then you like, yeah, you flip the guy, you flip the 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 beetle over, and then you can like do some nice. Oh, that's a nice thing too. Is like you can like juggle guys sometimes, and it feels really good to get some juggles in. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, but then like every stage, like one thing that's nice is like every stage seems to to like put in something that's a little bit new or a little bit different. Um, so there's like one stage that has like these kind of like pinball flipper things, and so kind of like similar to the beetles. You have to get like on the underside of a flipper to flip it over. And then when you flip one over, there's like blue ones and red ones. It flips over all of the ones of the same colors. Mm. So it's kind of like creates sort of like a platforming puzzle to like, okay, I've got to like flip this one here and then jump on top of it. But then I have to like go through this little corner or whatever and get to the other side. Um, the turnips here are like kind of how you refill your health. There's also uh, 
a shop that you can get to on the map between levels because they what have like that? a level map similar to like a Mario 3 or something. Uh, and you go into the shop and uh, with the coins, the, or not the coins, but the little small little whatever they are, these, these guys, little, the gems. Little, little gem guys, uh, you can put those uh, into a couple of gotcha machines. And the one gotcha machine basically gives you like bonus health. So you see how you have like four ticks of health? Mm -hmm. You can buy uh, with like 200 gems, you can buy like another hit on your health. Nice. Up to like, I think another four. Um, but once those go down, they don't refill. Temporary. Like your normal health, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, there's just like a lot of this stuff where like you're learning to like get the momentum right, learn to basically platform while drilling. Uh, this part here, you're seeing that, like they have like these kind of like these nests that these enemies spawn out of. So you gotta get up there and hit the nests. Um, and a lot of it is feel. A lot of it is like sound. And then yeah, and then you get these things that your drill goes into. So like even using your key, your drill goes into oh, the key, and then like spinning the drill turns the key in the lock. Yeah, which is nice. This game is cool, man. I'm into Dude, this. I'm yeah, so hyped. Um. Go to the uh, the Go cannons eat. clip, because uh, this is a full on like uh, this level is like this is a Donkey Kong Country level. Okay. This is like a Donkey Kong barrel High blasting praise, dude. level. That, that shovel knight level of yeah. praise here, to re <laughs> referencing Does Donkey Kong. Uh, it Can probably just skim to like the middle somewhere, and you'll probably see it. Yeah. So like, dude. yeah, you were you were yep. there a second ago. Yeah. Yep. So the, these things. So you get your drill into the back of the cannon, and then when you release it, like shoots you out but then just like donkey kong country you've got like the guys flying around you gotta let uh, go at just cool. the right second perfect uh and here but this is a, oh. this level is like a bonus level oh perfect so to get these levels you gotta collect you gotta collect those big coins mm -hmm. and every that hurt is this you playing yeah that hurt me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he went back and tried to get it. <laughs> every, um, <laughs> so like every one of these levels has a set number of those big coins hidden in them. And then the shops, uh, for each world, there's a key. And if you get 10 of those coins, you can buy a key and get the bonus level for that world. Perfect. Mm. Uh, and then each world has like four levels, a bonus level, and then a boss. Amazing. So, and the levels aren't super long either. Uh, so like, I want to say like seven to eight minutes per level. Um, trying to see what else is, was in there that was pretty cool. Uh, there is, um, another thing that you can like put the drill into, uh, there's like a, like a Gatling gun. And so there's this level where you're basically just shooting this Gatling gun around at enemies. I think that's the, the giant's level. If you want to jump over to that one for something different. Okay. Um, there's one there's a couple of things with uh with lava. So there's like one where there's like a beach level and like a volcano would like spew like chunks of lava, but when they would hit the the water, it would create a chunk of that soft ground that you could drill through and then you kinda jump out of the water. Yeah. Um and then there's another one that was like a full on uh lava level. And that one there were like these little sprinklers. Oh yeah, pretty much any level that has mines, I like hit like every freaking mine. Um, <laughs> but we'll see the Gatling gun here in a second. Uh, the uh, the sprinklers would like cool the lava for a bit, dude. And then you could drill through, but then like the rest of the lava around it would heat it back up. So you only have like a limited amount of time. Pixel junk to get through there. Pixel junk. Yeah. Nice. So, so that was pretty nice. Uh, there's another uh, mechanic, which I don't know if we grabbed any of the clips for it, but there are, uh, it's introduced in like the second, like midway through the second world, I think, that uh, there are these like grapple points and they're like, they're like a hook shot kind of thing. So like when you fly at them and you grab them, then you do like start spinning around it. Mm. And some of them have this like really nice rhythm of like, you're coming out of the dirt you grapple and then you spin around like right above you like a C and like j dig back into the dirt. Yeah. Uh, and then there are others that are just like fixed points that you like you pull just straight towards. Uh, what a fantastic vibe change with this minigun, blood. Yeah. That's what I mean. It's like yeah. you have little things like that and like almost every level kind of like does something that's a little bit different. Mm -hmm. uh, there's one that's like um, uh, it's got like a waterfall, uh, but it's like. 
it's like an ice waterfall or whatever. So you're like going up through the ice as it's falling and like trying to like get higher and get to like uh, other points. Uh, and then one more that I, to switch to is the the snowmobile because I want to show this thing off. Um, so just kind of again like these different things like the cannons, like the keys. Uh, there is uh, this uh, these snowmobiles that you put the drill into, and Dude. now you're like going around on this huge snowmobile <laughs> and doing Cody jumps and stuff. It's out of control. Yeah, and there's this whole highest possible expectations. Yeah, there, there's a there's a whole like boss um, level that Amazing. like you're on the backs of. Well, like, I like how it goes 3D when you turn toward the camera. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like it's I one of these games that. where it's like it Aww. looks 2D, but it's actually 3D. You know, it's just like Aww. giving you the illusion of a 2D pixel game. Um, and then the shop's got like all kinds of like little cosmetics and stuff. Like you can change your hair. And I was your gonna cloak. say your hair keeps changing. Yeah. Uh, there are also, uh, I didn't get too into it, but there's like a, a sticker book. Uh, so you can like. How Nintendo of them. You can buy <laughs> like basically back panels, like different scenes. And then you can use the gotcha machine to uh, get different like character stickers and things. Cool. So, and then you can just go in there and rotate them and you can change the color palette and all that. Oh yeah, this is another thing that's in this level. It's like these like brittle ice bits that like break away when you go through them, so you only have a limited amount of time. Um, Switch and PC, right? Yeah, Switch and PC out today. Out today? Out today, blood? Yeah. Today? today? Holy cow! <laughs> blood, you buried the lead on that. Dude, I think I said it right at the start. <laughs> the Odyssey of Recollection, dude. Uh, oh yeah, these are the, the flipper things I was telling you about. So you hit the flipper from the bottom, and then it'll it'll like hit the other flipper too. Uh, but I had to get rid of the ice first, so I couldn't flip it while the ice was there. Um, and that's the the grapple point. But uh, the one thing that was that has been like a little bit of a, a setback here it is. is yeah, just, here we go. It's just some of the boss fights are like definitely like difficulty spikes. Got it. Got it. Got it. So, Where they feel like just kind of unfair. Yeah, like it's like it's it's not. I don't know if I would necessarily say that it's unfair, but it's just like trying to like work with the mechanics and like figure out like how do I avoid getting hit by this guy because mm -hmm. like I can take four hits or not. I can take three hits really, like four hits and I'm dead, and he's gonna take like twenty five before he's down. You Got know, it. so you have to really More like attrition. get those patterns down and learn like when he's gonna go underneath of you or come and ground pound you or whatever. So like the the beetle took me a, a few good tries to get him because he was just spraying bullets all over the place. I'm like, how do I avoid these bullets? Um, and then um, the second boss was all right. The second boss I got first try, uh, but then the the third boss was like, I <laughs> spent like a good half hour on that boss because he was like another. He was like your size, but he had two drills. Mm -hmm. um, so he was a tricky one. But I'm, like I said, it feels good. It sounds good. There's some really good music uh, in here, too, uh, that changes up vibes level to level. Um, and uh, when you come into some levels, like, you get, the, like, the chainsaw pull. Dude. Starting up the drill. Um, and, yeah, it can be pretty challenging when Any you're, like, trying out? to sort out stuff like this. Anyone give it a 10? Uh, I don't know. I haven't looked at the review numbers. But it's good stuff. Looks awesome, dude. Can't wait, blood. Out today. Out today. It's got an 80. 80, baby. 88% of critics recommend. Nice. Sick. I think I have this on my team, too. Nice. Get those points. Yeah, and, yeah. and like I said, I don't think it's super long. I think they were estimating it depending on like how thorough you are, like being between like three to six hours. Oh. Something like that. It's friendly. I nice. think I've already put more than three in, but that's me, you know, like a... <laughs> you take your time. I take my time. Mm -hmm. I look for the secrets. Yep. We got more to come. Oh, uh, hang on. It put me in first now. Woo! Nice. I've been in fourth all year. I mean, like, we've got three games that have come out. But, <laughs> yeah. All right. Sorry, I hubered you. <laughs> uh, we've got more to come, but if you've been enjoying the show so far, please take a second to like and subscribe and ring that bell on YouTube. It helps us and it helps you stay connected. Let's get into June. 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 Uh, June 4th. Huber, why should I care about Destiny 2, The Final Shape? Uh, this I know is my, that Bungie needs this to This is care. my fizzle, dude. There's a lot riding on this This thing. is my straight up fizzle. Yeah, don't care then. <laughs> Woo. Uh, no, the reason you should care, though, is because this is the end of the Infinity Saga. 
AKA right. the like that. dark light and darkness saga. Because that turned out really well for MCU. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, this is the end of the big Destiny story arc. So there's a lot riding on this. It's supposed to be one of the biggest, if not maybe the biggest expansion they've done. They mm. delayed it for a while. Yeah, that's right. The last expansion to me was the worst. So Light the game fall or whatever. Yeah, so the game is on a di- it's it's on a downward tra- trajectory right now for me. Going into this, there I, there's just no hype on my end. I don't know how the Destiny community is doing. I also don't know if I can trust them all the time because they are like so hot and cold with Destiny. It's mm. like the most hot and cold right. community in the biz. Where one minute they love it and the next minute they despise it and it's the worst game ever made. Um, but what I do see is a lot of worry. I have seen that. A lot of concern. A lot of players that have been like, yo, I, I think I'm out of Destiny after this. You know? Right. It was like when Endgame was coming out, a lot of people were like, you know, watch that and then just like dip for a bit. It's like you want to see this big storyline through to the end. Um, another concern is that like they're ramping up on marathon and it's like, like, obviously this is their main game, but like, you know, how are they going to do like both to, of these things? Yeah. Yeah. I don't like to see you ramping up on like a new, your new hotness when like you're supposed to be ending this all in. Is this going to end destiny two period or just no. like the, the traveler story? Arc yeah. This is the end yeah, of the infinity thing. saga, okay, whatever okay. the hell that like the light and darkness saga, I think they call it. Yeah. Um, also, you know, as like Destiny lore, very cool, very complex, very convoluted. <laughs> um, so it's like as they tend to do. Yeah, the Bungie way. So, like, admittedly, obviously, I've played every expansion. I'm fully caught up, but I couldn't tell you two things really about what the hell is going on. I know about the Seeker (laughs) and like his ancient race and like they found the Traveler on his planet and he's like chasing it down, trying to like kill it or like, okay. okay. (laughs) Um, So I would love, I would love to hear the perspective from the most hardcore Destiny fans that are fully ingrained and caught up and know the lore like the back of their hand, how they're feeling. Mm-hmm. Okay, let me tell you. <laughs> um, but as someone who really just dips in for the expansions, and, you know, plays, you know, every once in a while, I should be more hyped than I am. So I'm, I am concerned. I'm very cautious about this expansion. So... We'll see, because the stakes and the expectations are the highest. Yeah, they've, I mean, they've if you're ending a, a story arc, it should be exactly, yeah. exactly, and like how expensive and, and you're Destiny out is. Putting these big delays and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I, and I think that like that pressure is definitely felt. Yeah. yeah, there's been a lot of like worry around Bungie in general. So. Yeah. So big to me. To me, even if you're the most optimistic possible, to me this this whole thing is just a big coin flip. How it's going to land. Like, is this going to be the best expansion, or are they going to go out with a fizzle? Um, also, on the fourth, uh, Killer Clowns from Outer Space is getting a game that day, uh, and Life by You is hitting early access. Then on the sixth, we just found out about this game uh, the other week, Blockbuster Incorporated, uh, spiritual successor to the movies. Yeah, dude, love the movies. Yeah. Uh, this whole, like... Movie studio management sim, mm-hmm. building your property. I will say the setting name. Up your films. The name does offend me <laughs> because even after I'd seen the trailer, when I was looking at the review uh, docket, I thought it was like Blockbuster Video, yeah. mm-hmm. like a game about Blockbuster. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So I'm offended by the name be- for giving me Ugh. those expectations. <laughs> like I want to manage a blockbuster video in a game. Exactly. That's, that yeah. sounds like it. Like that arcade awesome. paradise, but oh, yeah. blockbuster video. That's that's fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That would be such a good idea for a game. <laughs> and like if you put a different movie on, you know, you're running movies, you get like different customers that like stay longer and yeah. stuff. Oh, that would be so yeah. fun. Dude. Yeah. Let's make that. Yeah. Uh, but but to be fair, the movies is amazing, and this trailer is really cool. So I'm, I'm I like still you excited. know the other thing this is reminding <laughs> him of is uh, the Two Point Hospital. Yeah, yeah. I was actually asking when they announced this if this was the same people, but I don't think it is. But yeah, I don't know. Looks, looks cool. 
Yeah, I'm excited to, to make it some kind of advantage. Did, got, Sophia was tell, and I were talking about this, and I realized, like, because she was like, oh, yeah, I'm so excited for that. And I'm like, I am too, except for, like, it just reminds me that I would rather, like, just make a movie. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. Rather than play a game about making the movie, I'd rather just do it. Yeah. <laughs> well, and that's the other thing, too, is, like, I'm curious like front to back like do you ever actually see something that looks like a movie or is it just like I think you do I mean they yeah, yeah. they were referencing a bunch of movies in the trailer right. I assume you can set up how you want yeah. it to be but then probably watch the scenes back I don't know yeah yeah yeah, I mean, yeah I'm curious uh, June 14th uh, Monster Hunter Stories 1 and 2 are coming out on new platforms uh, so it'll be nice uh, for those things I think like the wait the, say that again Monster Hunters and Monster Hunter Monster Hunter Stories. Monster Hunter Stories. And Monster Hunter Stories too. Got it, got it, got it. Got it yeah. Got it, got it. Getting, getting out there on more platforms. Got it, got it, got it. Also getting out there on more platforms that day. Shin Megami Tensei 5 Vengeance. Vengeance. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, not only getting out on new platforms, but getting out of the way because that was supposed to come out on June 21st. So it did they move. moved it up a week oh. to the 14th. How nice. <laughs> Because there's a, a little DLC coming out on the 21st mm-hmm. that we're going to get to in a second here. Um, but yeah, this, I mean, this is one of those games where it was definitely... Uh, held back by the Switch? Held back by the Switch a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Can't deny it. <laughs> I Can't deny it. Can't deny it. On <laughs> Can't deny it. Uh, but uh, it does look so much better visually oh, in this shit. trailer. Yeah, this is the one I played. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it looks That's so, like, so oh, there's much your better. testimony right there. I can't even recognize it. <laughs> it's like I played them. Yeah. Oh, and then there's just goodness. Goodness. it sounds like they're just doing so much more to it too. Like they say there's a new story path, new areas, more demons, improved combat, whatever that means. Mm-hmm. Uh, so really just taking like a, a holistic look to this like, rather than just like you know, bolting on another chapter yeah. or something. Yeah. Like a Persona 4 Golden or Persona 5 right. Royal, yeah. Vengeance is a cool title. I agree. For it. Yeah. Because the, the, you know, the V is there already. It's, it's cute. It's that cute. That is cool. Great logo. Good stuff. Uh, June 18th, hashtag blood, which... Stop trying I to make I, blood happen, blood. <laughs> I guess I, I, I don't know if I have a like good fizzle, so like I don't want to be mean, but maybe this is the thing that like I'm just not necessarily. It's just not my vibe, maybe. Um, but uh, you play. This is, looks kind of like a Cartoon Network show, uh, and uh, you play as like a teenage vampire hunter. Uh, so you're out there hunting vampires and stuff, but then you're also you know you're talking to your dad, you're going to school. You know, you're going to the mall and then fighting vampires and monsters in the mall. I love video games. Um, yeah. Uh, it says, quote, save your friends, fight off the vampire apocalypse, and survive the horrors of freshman field hockey practice. <laughs> um, yeah. I don't know. I think it looks cute. Yeah, the visuals are awesome. Yeah, I think it's got a good v- visual style, but it's, I th- like, I think they're, they're, they're doing a good job of going with, of hitting what they're going for. I just don't know if that, what they're going for is something that I just generally it, have a vibe for usually anyways, personally. Yeah. So well, I don't know. It's yeah, probably it's like Dexter's lab or something. Is her weapon vibes. like a, a cricket bat? A noisy cricket? What is she using? Field hockey, probably, because they ho- have field yes. hockey practice. Nailed it. Yeah. There might be other weapons, too, just depending on, like, maybe you just use whatever's available at the time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, but... Yeah, I know this is probably fine. I don't know. Stretching to find a fizzle here. Yeah, it's probably Should have looked at something earlier. Throw There's it on Destiny, something man. Up there. Just throw it know. on. Put some pressure on Bungie <laughs> to deliver. Maybe Erebon. Maybe Erebon <laughs> is the fizzle because I don't know. Like, that idea is kind of cool, but I don't know if it's, <laughs> if it's going to land. Bungie can take it, dude. They can take the fizzle. Uh... Also on that day, on the 18th of June, still wakes the deep. Oh, yeah. Alien meets yes. the abyss. The game. Yeah, dude. Horror game. Oh right. Jessica. On an oil rig. <laughs> off the coast of Scotland. That's evil Jessica. <laughs> you're out there. You're disconnected from everyone. You can't communicate. You can't get help. And there's something on the rig. Maybe, or it's all in your head. These visions. Bring back on the air. <laughs> Bruh! It's your, it's your ex, Jessica. <laughs> your ex. Come to the rig. <laughs> no. 
Oh, this, oh, this is my nightmare. Dude. Oh my god. <laughs> Just yeah, blood coming out of the walls. What's happening there? Got a hammer. Oh, yeah. I love a good I'm fine hammer. I'm being on the rig, but as soon as you get under the rig, it's mm. like literally my nightmare. Right. There, like, there's I'm fine some with dead the monsters, space, the like thing, corpse the thing, thing ask stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah that's oh, I hate lovely. it. I it looks hate like looking like at that. Good necromorph action. There. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Huber, you're looking forward to this one. 100%. Still wakes the deep, dude. Sign me up. It's all about the atmosphere. And how stressful that feels. I want to be stressed when I play that game. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when you throw in, like, that's such a hard balance to me. That is, like, like, the biggest push one way or the other if I love it or I'm just okay with it is, like, c- how the combat and the puzzles factor into survival horror. Getting all of that right is the challenge. The atmosphere, combat, puzzles. So we'll see how it all shakes out. June 21st, SMT5 moved away because Elden Ring, Shadow of the Erd Tree. This is my fizzle, dude. Easy Allies 2024 <laughs> DLC expansion extra content of the year. There you go. Done. <laughs> we did that one. Don't have to debate it. Yeah, I don't even want to watch this. I avoided the trailer. <laughs> I don't want to see it. I avoided everything. What do you want? I want to go on fresh. We'll play the trailer. Anyways. I'm not watching. I'm not looking. <laughs> play the trailer. Damn I refuse. It. I'm not looking. It's your job. I'm not looking. Uh, uh, I'll just describe everything that I see. The to the, you. the egg. The handout of the egg, though. We knew that Wait, was you gonna. Did watch this we assumed oh. that that would be the DLC hook. Yes, we assumed I, that he would. I glance. Wake up in there. Yeah, I glance. I don't. I, I don't like to look. God, am I gonna have to like? How how like how how easy is it gonna be to tra- uh, change one of those other jobs? Like, make sure my spec is right. Hope they. I know if, if you have those Go items, you can do that pretty yeah. 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 Oh yeah, you can just do it there. The school, I forgot. She can yes. Thank you. you. Thank you. I, I I've said it before. I'm just so excited. It's hilarious. I never do new game plus initially in from games because I know some DLC is coming. Right. So I'm like, wait, didn't you? You don't have the plat? No. What? In Elden Ring? Yeah. Nah, that game was like 80 hours. I was good. I'm like, Do I'm, I'm I good. have the plat? Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm on like new game. This feels like three. a hard game to plat. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm okay. I have the plat in Bloodborne. I told you. Same. Yeah. Elden Ring is easier to platinum than Rebirth, in my opinion. <laughs> then uh, what? Yeah, that I'm not surprised by. Yeah. <laughs> After I think what Rebirth is harder with? to platinum than in Elden Ring. That's me. Um, Rebirth is hard to finish the first one. This, yeah, this is going to be, this is going to be, like, as good or better, I feel like, than, like, 90% of the video games that come out this year. I mean, we all know how good Elden Ring is. It is a generational game. It is a goaty game. And when you take that level of quality you 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 take how long they've been working on this and then you look back at the dlc for the souls series and bloodborne i mean how can you not believe that this is going to be nothing less than a 10 out of 10 mm-hmm. that's it there's the, the i mean that's it sign me up i'm ready i'm ready to die I'm ready to relearn the game. I'm ready to use my heavy brick hammer again. It's been so long. I'm so ready. Like all these new weapons, nah. I'm just waiting. I'll for try. The, I'll try them for a second. The patch notes but I that am day, ready. announcing like every single existing build that still survived <laughs> all the nerfs is like they're also nerfed now. Good luck. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you don't want to see these enemy types, dude. <laughs> Get them away from me. <laughs> That's some of the best shit ever, dude. Is seeing a new enemy type in a Souls game. There should never be a trailer for a Souls-like... I do have like, the plat for Elden Ring. Ever. Oh, there nice. should They should never make a trailer. <laughs> for, for this, for, for any of their, their soul. I'm serious. It should be illegal. How would they... So just a title reveal? Yeah, that's all you need to know. Could, they make, what about, like, the they, gameplay they, hook? Like, if it was Sekiro, could you, like, really see, like, the, the what? Like, we know it's going to be great. Can you at least what, show the character walking around one environment? Would that sure, be okay? Sure, sure. That'd be okay. Okay. The first like ten I, minutes of the game. I don't think that's gonna work. Yeah. But <laughs> Dark Souls one, two, three, Bloodborne, Sekiro, Elden Ring are all tens. We don't need to know anything else. What did they do? A live Demon Souls as well. Trailer. Like I'm not even joking. Live action live trailer. Action. 
just like give her a con like to illustrate the concept so you're not even seeing the game yeah how about weird. that all right <laughs> that counts I, yeah that, that's good <laughs> Uh, June 25th. Yo, that thing's gonna be like 20 hours long. Huh? Only At 20? Least. Good luck. More, no, I think, yeah. I think it'll be more than that. Oh my god. I think it'll be huge. Was it 40 bucks, right, for this? Or something? I, I remember the price being, like, it's, pretty intense. Yeah, I think yeah, it's it was higher. Check. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. Oh my god. It's so that's- I know how big they said it is, but I don't know. And it wasn't 70 you. originally. It was before the 70 increases, right? So that's, like, two-thirds. 50. 50? Oh my god. $50? Sorry, 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 sorry. That's the premium bundle edition? That's the premium bundle edition. Wait, what was that about? What was that originally about, Isla? $50? Oh yeah. $50? What was that for? Was that the stuff? What? No, no, it was a while ago. Okay. It was before that. It was $39.99. Okay. 40 bucks. Yeah, it was some game that came out that was $50, and we were both just like... Oh, it was Destiny Lightfall. Destiny <laughs> Lightfall. <laughs> Fifty dollars. <laughs> what for the like hell? Fifty dollars. Destiny. <sighs> yeah, shout out there in tree is 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 goatee material. Uh, June twenty fifth, we got another one coming back. Super Monkey Ball Banana Rumble. So excited! I love Super Monkey Ball, dude. Yeah, we got that remaster, which is great. Yeah, and it was nice to see that, like, yeah, that led to an actual sequel. Yeah, so this is a brand new one. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Yeah, it's a new one. Um, Two hundred all new stages. Wow. Uh, support for up to four players in local or online play. Great. Uh, there's also a uh, 16 player online for some things like maybe the mini games and stuff. I'm not exactly sure um, uh, which things are 16, which are four player, but it's pretty nice. Dude, it looks having good. split screen and stuff there it too. It looks good, Blood Wars. <laughs> <Warrior. laughs> oh my goodness! Uh, and they're also adding uh, the spin dash. Yep. Uh, similar yeah. to Sonic. Hell yeah! Four player Sonic split spin dash. Co-op. Dude. Yeah, I am very jazzed about this game. Very, I love Super Monkey Ball. Again, I love a game that you can play for twenty minutes or five hours. <laughs> Either way is correct. Uh, and then you throw in co-op too, and the the shenanigans just the get one out thing of that yeah that I don't think I've seen, at least not in that trailer, is mini games. Yeah, Monkey Ball mini games are like. Legendary, yeah. Right? Gotta be like there, monkey right? golf, monkey bowling, Dude. like knocking people off the platforms, the glider. Yeah, like maybe they're saving it for a little so closer. So much them. there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm stoked for the speed runs. <laughs> yeah, they're nuts. <laughs> monkey ball speed runs are like flip, flip. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was point uh, six seconds for that stage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's wild. Uh, and then rounding things off for the spring, June 27th, we have Luigi's Mansion 2 HD. Yep. Uh, originally Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon uh, for the 3DS. So they're, they're That's why I'm confused. Yeah. They yeah. Call, yeah was, I was like, wait, Luigi's wasn't Mansion called Dark Moon. Wasn't it Dark Moon? Everywhere like, else was called 2, apparently. Got it. Shout out to Ryan Stevens every time he's obsessed with this, uh, yeah. this video game. I remember. And literally calls it like a, a true masterpiece. <laughs> I remember him putting just so much buzz on Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon of like, yo, this is one of the greatest games ever made. I had a great time <laughs> with it too. I like how you go yeah. to different mansions. It's you know mm-hmm. kind of a cool concept. Yeah. 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 Oh, missed a trick to call it Luigi's Mansions with a dollar sign for a <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was a, the, the biggest... Uh, thing for me with this was yeah going to the different ones and the the different ideas and and, and environments that they had going there. But I also like at the same time I I did feel a little bit let down in terms of like the ghost variety because mm. the original game like a lot of those ghosts were pretty unique characters um, and kind of had their like backstories and stuff. Whereas in Two, you did a lot more of just like, oh, the generic green ghost, the generic blue ghost, and yeah. and just like those kind of like general enemy types the, with a lot less of the more unique ones. The DS limitations. Maybe, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's 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 looking nice. It's like 
maybe not like a huge, huge upgrade from the original, but it's nice to have these 3DS games make the leap because yeah. otherwise they're just kind of they're stuck over there. Oh, totally, it says the multiplayer too. Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, I think you're right. The sky, the scare scraper, or whatever. There, yeah. Very cool. Added that. This is giving me a lot of hope, not because this game is good and people get another chance to try it out, but the Nintendo taking a previously game locked to 3DS and mm -hmm. porting it to another platform. It's like, cool. Do more of that, please. Like, <laughs> free more 3DS yeah. games off 3DS, please. <laughs> was 3 Luigi's Mansion 3? Yeah, there, that was on is, Switch. Right? Yeah. That was on, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah, was, yeah. that was like a couple years ago. Yeah, that, yeah. Was, that, that, that was excellent. That had like yeah. co op to cool. like the that main story. Phenomenal. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that's it for our spring game preview. See, some good games coming out. Yeah, I've got one more to talk about though. We'll get let's gonna get Gabby in here. Gabby, so get on your mic with your headphones. She's there. coming. Because uh, we did a group stream the other day, so she got to play a little bit of this too. But uh, yeah, so this is from Good Feel, who did uh, Kirby's Epic Yarn and some of the Yoshi crafted games, and now Princess Peach. Princess Peach is going to the theater, and the theater gets taken over by Grape <laughs> and the Sour Bunch. <laughs> Love it's that. Masked thieves to take over all of the different plays because it's like this theater is just like a hall of different theaters, essentially. Yeah, it's like a million different theaters. In what? <laughs> yeah, the stage is a million miles long. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, although there are some things where they kind of play around with that, which is, which yeah, again, like totally. go, going back to like those other games, like you kind of see the kind of the heritage of like, okay, like instead of like crafting materials and yarn, it's like using those same kind of materials for like, oh, props and yeah. sets. Yeah, the, the like production design of it all is so brilliant. Like everything is a flat. So like, you know, they'll, it'll get pulled out of the way or whatever like everything is a prop or a, a set piece it's just like it's so brilliant yeah you sometimes you'll see like the, the castle in the background it's just like a smaller version of the castle like right yeah, there exactly and then like at one point blood noticed one of the enemies we were chasing was on strings like these you could barely see these like yeah. near invisible strings holding this like puppet up yeah uh, and uh, you have this uh, companion with you uh, named Stella. Stella. Uh, and uh, so. Stella Blade. Yeah. So with uh, a lot of the levels, when you first start a level, um, you're just playing as Peach in her, her quote unquote normal form with Stella. But with uh, using Stella, you can like make like flowers bloom or have like uh, light lamps or yeah you have like bulbs. a singular attack kind of yeah as, as standard peach and then uh attack. but it can also like encourage uh guys who are like yeah. oh i'm not strong enough to chop down this thing and you use stella on them and then they get more power it's, it's like a, a point of inspiration yeah yeah and then you can also uh attack um enemies yeah with with stella as well and then uh, when you get like a little way into the level, then you find that level's uh, costume. Yeah. And there are a lot of these. I only saw a couple because mm -hmm. I just played this on stream, but they are so cool. I also, I did not expect, or rather I expected each costume to be partnered with a combat ability. Mm -hmm. I did not expect like all the other stuff that you do right. that's not combat related. Um, that came as a total surprise. Yeah. Yeah, and it's it's simple, but I think because there's so much variety, the simplicity is actually pretty good considering like this is something clearly you're like looking to be all ages. Yeah. You know, you play with little kids and and you know not have them get overwhelmed. Is there co-op in this game? There's not co-op. No, right. No. Okay. Um, yeah, because you're just always playing as Peach. Yeah. But so like with the sword fighter, you know, okay, so she can she can mash the B button to yeah. slash things. Uh, but then there are also, like, certain instances where you'll get, like, these rooms that have, like, a lot of fog on the bottom. Mm -hmm. And then when a guy, like, comes at you, then you can, like, push B to kind of, like, witch time behind them. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or you can push A to, like, zip up in the air and, like, bop them on the head I, and stun I'm them for a second. I'm terrible at, like, parrying and, like, perfect dodging and stuff. But this game has, like, a pretty cute 
perfect dodge that is, you know, the, the window of time is big enough that even I could do it. Um, and it's, yeah, it's like, uh, it's a lot of fun to, like, when you get that perfect dodge and you get that little animation or that it's like an image, it's brilliant animation. Right. <laughs> um, it's like very satisfying. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then there's uh, other parts um, in the yeah. There's the dodge. Oh yeah. Oh, it is. Yeah, it is a full animation. For some reason, I imagine it is just a, <laughs> a JPEG. But um, but the there's another part later on. Uh, so sometimes you'll have like be completely um, side scrolling 2D because like a lot of times it's almost like a like a beat 'em up right, where you can you go can, in like, and go out. In, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind the foreground, of foreground, upstage to, and background. downstage, as it were. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> But there are other parts that are like you're completely on a 2D plane, and when you're on those, then she can like do an up thrust yeah, to right, get right, geyser right. above her on different platforms. Um, and then, uh, let's see, what else I've got here? I got a bunch of notes here. Um, it, I, a lot of it felt to me like like Super Peach Wonder. You know, like yeah. there are parts where I was like, oh, like this could be straight out of Super Mario Wonder if it had like a theater level or whatever. Um, yeah. Yeah, because I think that's the thing. It's like just the different variety in the costumes, and I'll, I'll go over some of the other ones in a bit. But before that, just some of the things that are sort of like common to all of these is every stage uh, has its own like little collectibles. Yep. Uh, Love so that. you'll find Love coins, but then you also find these like uh, sparkle gems, uh, and uh, and you see them anytime you get one. You see like the meter of the ones that you've collected. Just like in Super Mario Wonder. So you know immediately that you've, you've yeah, missed you've one. Yeah, you missed one, and you're like, like, oh no, no where, where, where was it? Uh, but the levels aren't too long. Levels are like 10 to 15 yeah, minutes yeah, of yeah. each. Though I did, I, I thought they were a solid length. Yeah. Like, you know, I feel like sometimes <laughs> side scroller, either it's really, really short, you're like, whoa, or crazy long, you're like, when is this gonna end? But um, I yeah, the length of these levels was yeah. really satisfying. And then one of the other collectibles that you get is there's uh, a little guy uh, with like a mustache or something. It's like he he's usually in distress somewhere. Mm-hmm. Uh, usually in the beginning of the level. So far, like most of the times I found him, it's like before you transform. But there are times that I've seen him after too. Um, but when you rescue him, then he'll give you a ribbon. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, that's like a different. Uh, pattern for for Peach's your like standard dress. costume, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then there are also uh, in the lobby. There's a shop where you can buy some more mm-hmm. basic ribbons. There's a nice gradient one uh, f- uh, for her. There's like one that's like you're wearing like uh, stripes or hearts. Um, that part to me is very like Super Mario Odyssey, like mm-hmm. getting little costumes. Yeah, and, yeah. And then um, when you've done like four, because like each floor has like four different theaters on it and so when you've done a full set of four then there's like a door that appears and there's a boss fight and after you've beaten that like floor boss then there'll be another um dress that shows up in the shop that costs a little bit more but it's like Uh, themed after the boss yeah yeah so like the first boss is like a like a bird and a disco ball and then you get like this disco right, ball looking disco dress. dress. Totally, Second boss totally. is a snake, and so then you get like this green like snake skin dress. Yeah. Um, so it's actually like it, it's a pretty nice reward. Uh, and we've got the the ninja up here. The ninja's got some cool things uh, going on because it can like get into the tall grass and hide. Yeah, the camouflage which we're seeing right here. It, like, uh, and then you can also. <laughs> so it took me a while, but my first playthrough to like get how it worked. But you can like go up onto a wall. And then she'll put like a panel down, like a yeah, wallpaper. That was cool. Yeah, that she's yeah. hiding behind. Um, I love her holding up the little like yeah. flat. You can see things. the strings on these guys. Oh, yeah, maybe not. Yeah, the- you oh, can yeah, see you them can once in a while. Them. Just, just lightly. They're so like <laughs> they're so near <laughs> invisible. It's like why even include them? Just because it's cool. Yeah. Well, and the same thing with like the clouds in the background. Like from the right angles and lighting, you can see the, the strings holding them up and the shadows yeah. on the curtains behind them. Um, I love that she just has a spotlight on her all the time. Yeah. Oh, you blend into the wall. <laughs> this game is cute. Yeah, it's really cute. Yeah. Uh, and then the ninja one, like later in the level, has this crazy thing where you're like riding on a wave. Oh, that was the part where down. I said, oh, I don't this think is it's so clip, Super Mario Wonder. But, like, yeah. it, it looks like the Buffalo level in yeah. Super Mario Wonder. Yeah. Yeah. And then the, the cowgirl level. Yeah. Um, you're... 
you're using a lasso for a good part of it and like yeah. grabbing barrels and like and flipping them over them, yeah. at other people. But then like later in that level, like you get on a horse and you're like doing this horse chase and like having to pick lanes and all of that. And you both missed the um, same thing. Blood pointed that out. Yeah, we what? both missed one of the gems in the same spot. Yeah, because, it was hard. Be, yeah, because it's like basically there's a part where you have to like essentially cross the lanes. Right. And if right, you don't right. cross the lanes, you just you're it. just not going to get that gem. Super Mario Wonder. <laughs> um, the ones that I've done so far, uh, we did the the sword fighter, we did the ninja, we did the cowgirl, uh, we did the uh, patissier. Yeah. <laughs> the 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 pastry baker, and that one is different. So, like, some of these, like, cowgirl and ninja and sword fighter, like, they're very combat-focused. Yes. yeah. But with the the bakery one, like, you're doing, like, these cooking mini-games, and so, like, you've got to like do Mario this thing. It's Mario Party, like, chasing. Yeah. Yeah. Mixing up the batter, and then, like, you stop at mixing at the right time, and you get, like, a big stack of cookies. A pomentation cookies. <laughs> <laughs> and then later on, it's like, you have to, like, Use your control stick to like decorate yeah, the to cakes, trace. Yeah, and it's, it's really so hard Mario to like look at the pretty. pattern. And I'm like, wait, where is where does it go? <laughs> yeah. I'm not exactly sure. And sometimes the cake is spinning, and it's like it's good because I have to make a circle. And then sometimes it's spinning, and it's not helpful at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there is um, the detective, which is really different. Yeah, because you're going around looking at clues. And so you can examine different things with your spyglass. And then uh, they're like these guys that are like, they're, they're in disguise. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and there's certain other clues that like might be things that like you're specifically trying to figure out like what the solution is. And then you can hold the button and do like the, the Ace Attorney thing. It's like, aha! Yeah, she like literally, po- <laughs> it, it, it yeah. looks exactly like Ace Attorney, like eerily so. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> the yep. strike of intuition. <laughs> yeah. And this is, yeah, that's the tutorial when you find the little junior detective. It's like yeah, teaching you so how it works. Cute. Yeah. Um, there is. Oh, wait, these characters are called Thetes. Thetes. Right? Uh, okay. Yeah. I like the penalty you like got, feet. though. That's so for, cool. You can't just like blindly guess that stuff. You, you got like yeah, a, you would lose a heart yeah. if you lose. Yeah. Although the death, well, you, you hadn't seen one, but when it happened, uh, was you know kind of expected what they did because it kind of f- fell in line with like some of their other like like a, a Yoshi's Woolly World or uh, something like that where it's like you're just gonna lose some currency and that's it. Yeah. Uh, this thing here, so there's these hidden areas too and levels where you basically have to strike a pose with your costume. Yeah. Uh, and so if you find, usually there's like a little bit of a light or like a pattern yeah, on the ground I or something. It. Yeah, <laughs> like you can miss a lot time. of them. They're hidden. There's more in there than I, I thought at yeah. first too, because some of them will take you down to like a little bonus level like this. Others, uh, you can pose in front of certain things and, uh, and they'll light up similar to like when you're using oh. Stella. Um, but, uh, and that it, you, it often like brings you backstage. Which is so yeah. That's the thing you mean, like storage rooms and things. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, There is uh, the figure skater, Mm -hmm. uh, which is nice because that's like I forgot about that. They it's kind of like ice capades where they're like shining lights down on the ice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, So there'll be like different colored lights, uh, and some of them you'll have to spin, and others you'll have to jump. Yeah. Uh, And what's uh, interesting is that like. Some of them will, like, there'll be multiple ones that kind of combine. And then if you, like, hit them in the right spot, you can basically twirl, like, most of them uh, at the same time. Uh, And then you also, uh, you're you're helping out these other feats that are ice skaters. And so, like, if they're, like, down on the ground, you can spin next to them, and then they'll start skating behind you in formation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the boss fight is, like, all about that. Like, he steals all of your skaters and, like, makes them follow him. Yeah. And then, like, you spin them around and knock them down and then go pick your skaters back up until you get all of them. And then you all just skate a circle around them. <laughs> so cute. Uh, there's the dashing thief, which is, like, yes. Batman. Right. Uh, right. You're, like... Picking locks, hacking into things, and like using a grappling hook to like, um, to to like go up onto different. Um, that grappling hook is like, so cool. There's drones that are grapple points, mm-hmm. and some of them like you swing back and forth on, and others they look like upside down hangers, kind yeah. of. Yeah. And others they like just kind of like jump you forward. 
Um, and then uh, later on, there's a, a glider Halloween. that you're on that right. you're riding. Right. Uh, What's but there's... the game we had to play, Damiani, for Achieve It Yourself? For, oh, Pilot we Wings? We were a paper airplane. That was a WarioWare. Oh. Uh, that was a WarioWare. WarioWare. Yeah. Warrior, yeah. Warrior, Warrior. Um, but yeah, so she's cool because it's like, again, it's like kind of like a little bit more stealth focused. Um, and the, um, but with the glider, so when you've beaten a boss on a floor, you also unlock like a challenge stage. Uh-huh. Uh, and these are very much like the, the very classic Nintendo thing. It's like, oh, you thought this game was easy? Well, ha ha ha. Try the challenge right. stage yeah. out. <laughs> now we're going to make it not fun so at all. So it's like you have to, yeah, because it's like you have to do this glider stage <laughs> mm-hmm. without getting hit. I was going to say, that sounds like a very you achieve over. it yourself yeah. challenge. When I was seeing that, I was like, Damiani is machinating. And you have to like glide and, and avoid all of these things with like wind currents and everything without yeah. hitting any of them and get like a hundred plus something gems to get the uh, the extra bonus Don't ribbon. Don't get any bright ideas. <laughs> uh, there's also a Mighty Peach, who's kind of like like an anime hero, kind of like Mega Man esque. Oh, all my. So she's got, uh, or like uh, like Power Rangers. So she's got like uh, these kind of like electric punches that she does. Like uh, but then she can also like uh, you're like fighting off an alien invasion. <laughs> And so she can just like grab the UFOs and toss them, Whoa, or like super pick up cars. Beach. Or like, there's one point where you have to like pick up a bus and like hold it over your head to stop these <laughs> objects falling down. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Oh my god, the costume is so cute. <laughs> and then she gets like a like a later part with like you're flying around with a jetpack. Sick. Um, and then the the last one I've done so far is a mermaid. Um. And you're you're swimming around with the mermaid, but that's like got that's this whole. That's how they force you to do a water level. Well, it's it, it's interesting because she her thing is that she sings like Ariel. Okay. okay. Uh, and so you when you're in mermaid form, you don't really interact with things that much as yourself. You oh, can, so you're legitimately underwater. Yeah, the, huh. the, there's a part in the beginning that's actually really cool where like you're walking on the surface, but you see mermaid thetes underneath the water oh. so you kind of like get like both perspectives but see this thing you sing and it makes this school of fish move around and then you use the school of fish oh. to interact with different objects and you like open up these clam shells and like flip different things and stuff like that huh. uh, and then of course the the singing that's a, yeah that's another place where you can pose uh, and just get some extra coins some and, coins. and restore the picture um and then, uh, yeah, here's some more of the singing here. Because these, uh, the Sour Bunch here, they, they like, abduct uh, the, the musical players. You're supposed to be putting on a concert, but they abduct uh. some of the musicians, and so you've got to go get the musicians back. Um, and then once you get everyone back, then, they, like, you actually do the concert as the uh. finale. Uh, and there's, like, a whole, like, musical mini game there, kind of, like, it's, simplified DDR kind of thing, yeah. <laughs> it's a big uh, year for music in Nintendo games. Like, yeah. Like singing, I mean. like Because like, in Mario Wonder, there was so much singing, and this is a whole concert level. They're trying to tell us something. <laughs> uh, and then there are levels. Um, so like what we've seen, what I've shown you so far is like, they're like the introductory levels to those costumes. Mm-hmm. You do go to new levels where you go back to a costume. Uh, and so far I've only done the sword fighter ones. Okay. But what's interesting about those is that unlike um, the introductory ones, you start off with the costume because you've already unlocked it. So you don't have that like first part where you're just playing as normal Peach. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there's uh, stuff down in the basement. And I won't get into what that's about. But oh, oh, yeah. I that's just, kind of like, that's where you like learn like, oh, what's that. the ultimate goal, of, uh, uh, you know, in the basement. I got a tease of that on stream, but it was just kind of like glowy, spooky doors. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, after you do a couple of the levels with the same costume, then uh, something happens uh, in the basement. Okay, okay. Uh, but, yeah, so, like, I'm still kind of early in this, I think. But it's one of those games where I feel like... The more that I play it, the more that I like it. Mm-hmm. Um, even though it is simple, it's like 
like you were saying with Mario Wonder, it's like you just start wondering, like, okay, what is what's going to happen next? Yeah, that's the exciting part is yeah. like seeing what your costume is going to look like, <laughs> pretty much, <laughs> and like what dress you can unlock. Um, yeah, and like what those what power you'll get along with that costume. Yeah. So, and then you just got to play a little bit of it, but it's nice that you're, you're enjoying really it too. I really liked it. Yeah. I, I thought it was really fun. I expected it to be like a little more. A little like less mature, kind of, if mm-hmm. that makes sense. Like for for younger kids, a little easier. But um, I thought it was really fun. And Damiani, you you got to see a good bit of it. What do you what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I think you described it pretty well about how it's a game that's meant to be played by everyone. So it's like a very good, you know, beginner game if you just really mm-hmm. are you know, hesitant about like any kind of like skill level. It just allows you to like be able to play it and have fun and. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's an interesting yeah. concept um, and not going, like, doing the different costumes versus not doing, like, a platformer, like most, like, Mario and Mario spinoff games usually are. I mean, they already did that once with, was it Super Princess Peach? So I was, you know, it's it's it has a lot of charm. I didn't really get to hear the music very at all because uh, I couldn't listen to audio because I'd hear Echo. Right, yeah, so I don't really know what the music yeah. is like in it, but <laughs> I, I didn't know if they were doing, like, you kept commenting on it and that sounded cool so I, you know that i mm-hmm. wish i could have heard that but you definitely were like calling that out when it was happening so i, I trust you <laughs> nice yeah thank you gabby you're welcome uh and then we'll get here back in here how do you get out of here <laughs> oh, <you're coming laughs> right. watch your feet <laughs> don't trip That's, oh, it's empty. Okay. Yeah. It's peach hype. Looks sick. <laughs> <laughs> Looks sick. Looks like a cozy game. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Gotta have those, you know? Mm-hmm. Not every game needs to be a sweat fest. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's interesting is that uh, my uh, my niece is, is looking forward to it. Um, and they're, uh, they're playing like Yoshi's Crafted World or something right now. And it's like, did you know that that's made by the same people? That's <laughs> funny. It's so funny. But it's exactly, yeah, it's exactly the kind of, the same kind of audience they're going for. Nice. Also this week, uh, Sega sold Relic, uh, and is cutting 240 jobs across UK studios, including at Creative Assembly. Sega Hardlight and Sega Relic or Sega Europe. Uh, Relic did uh, Company of Heroes and Dawn of War. Mm-hmm. They're going to become an independent studio now. Okay. Um, and uh, but you know, Creative Assembly they had already just gone through a bunch of cuts after Hyenas got canceled. Mm-hmm. They're talking about how expensive that game was to make, Jeez. like one of Sega's most expensive games ever, and yeah. they just had to leave it. <laughs> um, Jurgen Post, who is the newly appointed head of Sega Europe, said, uh, we need to streamline. Should have just, never mind. Focus on what we are good at and position ourselves as best we can for the road ahead. In order to do that, we need to respond to the changing economic landscape and the challenges we're facing on the way we develop our products and bring them to market, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. So just a lot of the same kind of talk about just economic challenges and stuff, which economic is rough headwinds. because I feel like Creative Assembly was just like, Printing money for Sega for so yeah, long, dude. <laughs> All the Total War games and everything. Yeah. yeah. So crazy. Best of luck to them. Uh, we've got some more <laughs> more layoffs this week. Uh, Crop Circle Games every week dude. has been shut down. Uh, you may not be familiar with them uh, because they haven't put out a game yet. So they were a new studio that started in 2022 by one of uh, Undead Labs uh, founder uh, Jeff Strain. Uh, notably, they had hired uh, Naughty Dog's uh, na- narrative uh, veteran guy, ver- veteran narrative guy Josh Sher. Mm-hmm. Yep. And, uh, oh wait, I know him. Yeah, he's uh, a nice guy. Yeah, he is. Dang. Um, I was talking to him about this stuff at Dice. Nice. Because um, they had layoffs earlier this year, the project had been kind of put on hold, but now like just the whole studio is just shuttered. Um, and but what's crazier is apparently uh, the the boss Jeff Strain has just like ghosted everybody now. 
Like, he's deleted his LinkedIn. What? And, like, they don't know what's going on. Whoa, dude. Yeah. So. It's like an avowed situation. <laughs> Do not know. Um, Nintendo uh, has some layoffs as well, but this is a little bit more of a tricky scenario. So, basically, according to Kotaku, NOA seems to be reorganizing how they do QA. And it seems to be, like, putting in stuff with, like, a global QA reorganization. So, they're moving away from contractor positions. So, a lot of their QA in the past has been through contractors to where it's, like, another company that works with Nintendo that, you know, those guys, they're always working with Nintendo, but it's like they're not exactly, they're not actually in-house. They're not a quote-unquote red badge or whatever. And so now they're moving a lot of those guys to be full real Nintendo employees, but then there are also people that have been there for, like, a long time, for a lot of years, that mm-hmm. are being completely let go. So they, this one, like, I have more mixed feelings on because there is that weird contractor cycle to where, like, in some cases, like, contractor is good because it like it gives people expectations like you're saying it's like okay you're going to be on this project yeah and we can't guarantee you a job after that so it's like it's up front you know what you're getting into yeah that you're not guaranteed a job but at the same time kind of like with what's happening here uh with these guys at nintendo is like you're always kind of getting sort of strong along and so, like, maybe you'll stick around because maybe you'll get offered an internal position. And there's other things. Um, I think Bungie goes through this mess, too, to where it's like they have people that are hired as contractors, but they basically keep them around forever. Yep. And so, like, after two years, then you're like, you have to be out of a job for six months before you can start a new contract. And so... It's weird. It's messy. It's like there's pros and cons to it all. Mm -hmm. Um, Could this be some kind of like union busting move too or no? Maybe, but I I think that some of those outside QA groups have started forming unions as well. So, um, but yeah, you're not getting all the same. Some of them do have benefits, but some, but you're not getting the same kind of benefits that you would get like at Nintendo. Sega just got a union, right? Yes. Yeah. That was yeah. I didn't mention that, but yeah, that's I meant to bring that up too. That Sega just Sega of America, mm-hmm. they just finished signing the the union deal, mm-hmm. so they're getting some some protections there at least. Um, and then with this, with the Kotaku report, they were saying um, that the teams indicate that there actually hasn't been like a lot of work for them lately with Nintendo, and so it kind of shows that we're just kind of, we're in that period now where it's very clear that Nintendo in Japan is working on Switch 2 games. God, here we go again. And they're not ready (laughs) to let anyone outside of Japanese HQ get a look at them. And Keeley. You know, including, but that might be part of it. It's like, we don't want to be working with this outside company. We've been having too many Nintendo leaks. We're going to bring these guys in-house and have everyone under our own roof for, you know, they know it's expected. Isn't a Switch 2 just a Switch Pro? If it's the same exact thing, just stronger? It entirely depends on what it is. Got it. <laughs> it entirely yeah. depends on what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But I mean, you could say that for most consoles. The difference is Switch is different than other consoles. Yeah. So you make another one, and it's like, oh, well, now it's a Switch 2. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> um... Also, Gearbox. Oh, this is this is a good news that then became bad news on top of the good news. So it's a mess. Uh, sort of similar to the Nintendo thing. Gearbox uh, was sold uh, to Take Two from the Embracer Group for four hundred and sixty million dollars. So Gearbox is out of there. Uh, what's funny is Embracer bought them for one point three billion. So that's how desperate Embracer is to get three years ago too. that cash. Yeah, in 2021. Uh, so Take-Two is getting the main Gearbox office in Texas as well as the offices in Montreal and Quebec. Embracer is keeping Cryptic Studios, who do Neverwinter Online and Star Trek Online, Lost Boys Interactive, Captured Dimensions, and they're keeping, quote-unquote, keeping 
Gearbox Publishing, uh, who I wonder how much money published Rust. Remnant 2 and are also going to publish Hyperlight Breaker. Mm-hmm. So that sounded like that was what we knew last night before I went to bed. And it sort of made sense to me because it's like, okay, I understand why Take Two wouldn't want to take the Gearbox Publishing because they have private division doing kind of the same thing, et et cetera, et cetera. But then here's the thing. This morning, I just started seeing all these tweets. The majority of the staff at Gearbox Publishing has been laid off. So it's just like bare minimum, I guess. I don't know exactly how many people, but that team is basically out the door now. (sighs) I I just never want to hear that word again, dude. Right. God. So... Anyways, that's it for, I think that's it for layoff news. So next we have Marvel Rivals. Mm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if you watched this yet, Huber. Yep, I did. Yeah, coming from NetEase. Looks very, very, very much like <laughs> Overwatch. Yeah. Uh, you have teams of 6v6, mm-hmm. third person perspective, not first person. Yep. Uh, there are team up skills. Marvel staple right there. Oh, yeah. Got to have those team up skills. Definitely. Destructible environments, quote, the merciless clash between the tyrannical dictator Dr. Doom and his future counterpart from the year 2099, so it's Dr. Doom versus future Dr. Doom, Mm -hmm. has forced countless universes to collide in the time stream entanglement, creating new worlds and crises still unknown. Now superheroes and supervillains from across the multiverse must fight together and against one another as disparate groups seek to defeat both Doom before time. one achieves domination of these realities. Every effing time. It's just a way so they can have like multiple skins. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like every effing time the multiverse is just a business move and it makes me sick. I'm tired of it. <laughs> End the multiverse now. <laughs> God. Um, Other than that, the game looks cool. Yeah. Especially Doctor Strange's portals. They like hop right in. I want to see how all that works. Uh, f- friggin' Rocket landing on Groot. Like, that is the most hype thing. Cannot wait for that. How do you feel about the quips? Did you hear the quips? Heard some quips. Love that they got uh, Yuri in there as Spider Man. That continuity. I love that. Um, the quips are fine. You expect them with Marvel, it's their brand. Um, yeah, it just looks really good. I'm like surprised. Oh, magic. Okay. Yeah, magic's you know? in there. It looks a little slow, the movement. A little but slow. I'm sure it feels better when you're doing it. Third person is going to be a little bit different in yeah. those regards for sure. Galacta in there. Yeah. Uh, here's the, the list so far of characters uh, we've got Black Panther, Doctor Strange, Groot, Hulk, Iron Man, Loki, Luna Snow, which is the one that I don't recognize. Uh, Magic, Magneto, is she Mantis, related to Frost or whatever. Uh, Namor or Namor, mm-hmm. uh, Penny Parker, Rocket Raccoon, Scarlet Witch, Spider Man, Storm, heck yeah, Star Lord, and the Punisher. Punisher, <laughs> sick. <laughs> yeah, dude, awesome. Uh, Game Informer. She's Final- a K-pop idol. They better have a John Bernthal skin. Nice. Luna Snow is a K-pop idol. She's South Korean. Her real name is Sol Hee. Uh, she possesses ice-based powers. Uh, yeah. <laughs> cool. What is she from? Does she just have her own comic? Uh, first appearance, War of the Realms, New Agents of Atlas in 2019, created mm. by Greg Pak. So very new. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I hadn't heard of her either. Uh, Game Informer finally has Shut a up. standalone Magazine, subscription. Shout out. You no longer need to be a part of any kind of GameStop Thank bonus club or anything like mm-hmm. that. Uh, you get 10 issues per year. You can also read digitally, of course. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then they're very cute with the pricing. 1991 for the year that they started. That, that's amazing. So wait, have you never been able to just subscribe to GameStop? You'd always have to be a game sp- GameStop Power up plus member. rewards. Yeah. I thought you could informer. buy them in stores, though, too. You right? can buy them individually in store, yeah. Oh, okay. But you couldn't get a subscription yeah. without. Right. Yeah. And then they stopped giving me the hard copies from GameSpot. Oh. I was really mad. And like the, yeah, they yeah, auto switched like people over. Stopped. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. That's, I thought I'd heard something about that. I was mm-hmm. like, yeah, that's annoying. Because I was getting Game Informer for years and years and years. 
Oh, I play this teaser. It might be over before I'm finished talking. Uh, the first title from Yellow Brick Games uh, is going to be revealed on IGN next week. Goodbye, uh, Brick we got this little teaser here. <laughs> uh, they're an independent studio, but they've been working on this game uh, for four years now. Uh, it's a fantasy action adventure game. They're self publishing. Chief creative officer is Mike Laidlaw, who was uh, Dragon Age, one of the big guys right. uh, on, the, on the writing side for Dragon Age. Um, and uh, they've also got people in there from uh, some of the leads from Assassin's Creed Syndicate. Love Syndicate. So keep an eye out next week for that Love reveal. Love Syndicate, dude. It's and then we have an update on the Triple I Initiative. <laughs> There's going to be a showcase for, quote, Triple I Games nice. coming April 10th, 10 a.m., 30 plus announcements. Good Jeez. grief. They say 45 minutes of bangers, world premieres, exclusive gameplay, demos, drops. <laughs> Uh-oh. May contain traces of roguelites. Uh, <laughs> I think Darkest Dungeon 2 confirmed they would be at this. I think. Yeah. So I'll be watching. <laughs> My main hesitation, 45 minutes, 30 plus announcements. Yeah. That's too many. Yeah, that's a lot. That's not enough time yeah. per thing it's not for enough. me. Maybe know. it's three hours long, but only 45 minutes of it are bangers. Especially if they're triple I. I mean, yeah. yeah. Give them some time. Yeah. I mean, nice little 60 second trailer, you know? <laughs> Here's the game, boom, on to the next. Yeah. Sure. I mean, I mean, also, like, you get, you get one montage toward the end of, like, stuff that's out and true. coming out soon. That can count for, like, 15 games, right? That's true. Mm -hmm. That's true. Good point. Very true. We'll be keeping an eye out. Now it's when is that? Uh, April 10th. April 10th, okay. Yep. Now it's time for Love and Respect. Love and Respect. Love and Respect. From Alexander Zirinov. Never gets old, Damiani. <laughs> this was submitted for the wrong question, but I thought it was actually something we might want to get into. Great. What is the best time to announce a game's year one roadmap for microtransactions. Because <laughs> obviously Dragon's Dogma 2 had people going crazy. Yeah. Which like... There was so much I don't crazy get, I don't misinformation. Even get I don't even want to give those true. people the time of yeah. day, dude. But it's, Honestly, it's just, it, back it to makes the, me sick. Back to the thing we were talking about, about freaking out about a game before it's out. Like, Someone in our comments was like, you didn't even mention the microtransactions because, like, yeah, they don't matter. They don't fucking they don't matter. matter. They absolutely like, don't matter. They don't the fucking thing. matter. Play the game. Yeah, Holy like, you can shit. buy rift, cr rune cr or rift Crystals. You will never need to do that. I have 5,000 of them. The fact that <laughs> this, I'm not even exaggerating. I might have 7,000. The fact that it's sucking up so much of the conversation about you don't need to buy such a good you don't video need game yeah. makes me so Get off it. sad, dude. It, I'm not even mad. I'm sad. Sad. It's a dis it's hugely disappointing. Like I can understand people being pissed about the poor performance on PC. Like yeah, be mad about that. Mm -hmm. That shouldn't happen. Totally, that should not happen. But like being mad about being able to pay two bucks for a port crystal if you want when you can get four in the game. Like well, and the fact that you still basically you can only get one. You can't just like buy them endlessly. <laughs> uh, for port crystals, there you can get two in game. No, I mean when you I buy found. them. I don't think you can buy with that real money. purchase more than one time. Oh, you can have a total of ten, I bet. No, but but Blood is saying when you buy a real one, you're only allowed to buy one real one with money. I real think money. You can buy as many as you want. Maybe I'm wrong. Oh. I, I saw a thing that said you can hold ten. You can which hold, would but like I've I don't beaten think you can the game buy and you can 10, get, but I think you can get ten. You can get two in game in addition to two that are there already. Now I don't know if I'm correct anymore. Yeah. Anyway. I mean you haven't <laughs> played the game, so they haven't either. Neither it's really they. sad. It, it, and it, and it, it's it's sad on so many levels because then they're they're rewarded. They're reward rewarded with engagement. And that is like such a bigger conversation of this industry and it, like you know, video game discourse. It's like you spread this just misinformation and and hate on on a right. non-issue and you're the focus you're the conversation then it, it's just yeah well it, because the way it, it came across and a lot of people first presented it was like oh you have to pay to unlock fast travel and it's like no no this is just 
<laughs> like one very minor thing of putting a, one custom fast travel point when there's plenty of other fast travel points already. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Chad is also saying you can only buy one yeah. with real money. Yeah. But like the point is it doesn't matter. You don't need to. Yeah. And if you do, it's your choice. You don't. Like yeah. you can buy it if you want. Like maybe if you're in a panic buying a, a wake stone. Yeah. But. Like I found two and I only needed those. I only needed one. Really, I, you get one from a mission, and I got one other one, and that's I needed four, and that was it. Like whatever, it's missing the point of the game. Yep. Yeah. It's it's. There's never been a better time to call out lazy gamers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also, like circling back to the thing, like like your Rise of the Ronin thing. It's like you don't have to like every game. Exactly. Not every game has to be your game. Mm -hmm. You know, drop them. Yeah. They're trying, I think it's they're just, trying it's, to fit it in but like to what, you what were they saying, like. And it's like, yo, this yeah. is doing its own thing. It's like it's like taking something that like seriously doesn't matter. It's like you, you might as well just be have yeah. Capcom putting out a tip jar. And yeah. Well, right. <laughs> right. And, and they have so much power. They have so much power with this argument because we've been trained that microtransactions bad. All microtransactions bad. And it's like they get to get on this like moral high ground of like, mm. This stuff shouldn't cost real money. Like, this is shady. They kept it hidden. And it's like, not every situation regarding microtransactions are the same. Like, it's there is nuance to this. And it's just. Well, I think one of the things, too, is it's so like. so sad. Isn't it dude. that, like, a, a lot of these items that are on the store, too, it's like they're basically the same items that you get in the deluxe edition. Hmm. And then they, they just let people buy them separately if they don't want to get the full deluxe edition yeah so that's an interesting angle yeah. to you is like yeah i was actually talking to a friend who games pretty pretty often but he's not like hardcore and he didn't really know about dragon's dogma and he i was he immediately brought it up and then his thing was like yeah there's just so many of them so for him it was the quantity of the microtransactions right. but, but the thing which is, i was like i was like what but like, that's the thing that's why i was saying it was only one in general time or just because in with the wake stones up. it's like there's so many on a list because oh you can buy five wake stones and all five of them are separate purchases mm -hmm, mm -hmm, on the mm -hmm. list yeah and the same thing with the rift crystals it's like one two three four five once you bought those five microtransaction yeah. purchases you can't buy it again yeah because i just i take umbrage with yeah. people who think that like like our review means we're like shills for not mentioning microtransactions and it's like yeah we got a little thing in the email from them that was like here's what the microtransactions are going to be i glanced at it Same. and then i played the fucking game Same. and i was like oh you never need these Same. so it's like why mention it 100%. You don't need them. it doesn't matter none of it matters they're there if you feel like it they're there if you want to pay money to cheat yeah, like but I look at them like cheat not codes. cheating. It's um, like it's it's so like it's such a, like an insignificant. Yeah, no, it's benefit. not. Yeah, it's cheating so is even more than these. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Like it, like at at the closest thing to cheating is is a poor crystal just saving you some time of walking, yeah. and that's it. Like buying another like metamorphosis thing. Mm -hmm. Just use the fucking light options when you're creating your character. I will say that because like I came out looking like a weirdo, and yeah. I definitely like. I definitely used 500 Rift Crystals to buy that Act of Me Art of Metamorphosis book, you know, yeah. back when you could only get two in game. That is, like, what, that is one of the weird things. It's though, just like you you will have enough Rift Crystals. You never need to buy them. It doesn't matter. The uh, One of the things that was weird is that I, I didn't even notice this because, again, like you said, like, oh, we're just playing the game. We're not even really looking for this stuff sometimes is that it doesn't have a, like, start new game. Option, they're gonna have to patch that in. Otherwise, yeah. Yeah, yeah. the only way to start a new game is to like go in and like delete your save file from the like system interface. And like, which is weird. That is weird. Sure, but I mean, like, it's definitely a game founded on like big swings when it comes to yeah. game design choices. But it's particularly weird because they put like out that, that character choice, creator but... demo. You know, where it's like make ten characters and then right. never use, use eight of them. Yeah. Okay. Um, and there are mods, yeah. Chat's saying there are mods to get all these things for free anyway. Yeah, because it doesn't matter. Like, it doesn't matter. But what is the best time to announce your microtransactions? People are mad that <laughs> they were put out on the store day one without, I, you know, 
a prior announcement, even though they were... Even though we knew inf- about, yeah. They informed us before the reviews. I didn't even think it was a big I deal didn't think at it was all. A big, I didn't think Everybody, about it for two seconds. I didn't even think about it for two seconds. Me neither. It's like, just like, because it doesn't matter. Who holy cares. shit. <laughs> I'm amazed people are so mad about it. I don't get it. God. And they, those people haven't even played the game. They, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. Like, is there any good time? Because like, no, Beckham because like I was just saying, the like moral high later. ground of the whole like game shouldn't have microtransactions. They're just universally bad, and it's like there's never going to be a good time because people are always going to be pissed mm-hmm. no matter what. There's never a good time to do it. Um, there's never a good time. That's my answer. It's always going to be controversial no matter what. It's just a matter of how much controversy will be around it. Is there a good time for Denuvo though? Oh. Denuvo? No. <laughs> <laughs> is that? That's the the uh, anti piracy stuff that usually. Oh, Denovo or whatever. Yeah, Denuvo. Denuvo? It, yeah, 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 yeah. Usually tanks your performance a bit. Yeah. Usually screws with something. Yeah, that should be gone. Like that shouldn't be a thing still in 2024, the year of our Lord. Like, why is that still a thing? Anti piracy doesn't really work, but they're gonna stick it in there. To try to deter the five guys that it will work on. Yeah. <laughs> Insane. I was looking at the Grand Theft Auto 4 thing when you pirated that game. And if you pirated GTA 4 or like downloaded a, a pirated version or something, it would like make Nico drunk as hell when he's driving mm. and like your oh, car yeah. would explode. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Some of the old school in game <laughs> ones are pretty great. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. But, no good time. I really don't think there's a good time. Uh, maybe if your game has seasons and your season launches like a month or so after the game is out, do it around that time or something. Sure. Yeah. All right. Let's play a game. From Red Sky. Oh, yeah. This one's going to be a little bit involved. Uh I'm going to have to keep track of things. What's up, allies? Happy 8th anniversary. In honor of this joyous occasion, I thought it would be fun to play a game I call Hall of Eights. Hall of Eights. Love Eights. I have picked eight games from Metacritic's best games of all time list that have an 80 Metascore. You get six Werehogs to vote, like in Hall of Greats. Okay. So let's find out the first two inductees, love and respect, so basically, you'll have a three chip, a two chip, and a yeah. one chip. Uh, so these are. And these are games we gave eights, or th- games that. No, these are, are just... Metacritic eights. Oh, okay. But then you're gonna put your chips down on eight, which games you want, and then whichever ones have the most chips at the end are gonna be the two that get into the Hall of Eights. Like that is insane. Don't you want to know about like? climbing on monsters and stabbing them in the throat versus like why didn't you mention useless microtransactions <laughs> that you'll never use like what it, oh. I agree I agree don't worry about it so here are our games <laughs> keep a mental note I can definitely recap things we've got Shenmue 2 2002 Snipper Clips 2017 Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles 2004 Sleeping Dogs 2012. They put Sleeping Dogs 2, but they've got to mean Sleeping Dogs. Um, Gravity Rush 2, 2017. Mario Party Superstars, 2021. Lies of P, 2023. And Mist 5 in 2005. So Yo, have, End of Ages, dude? Or is that That is End of Ages, sorry. Uh, Lies yeah, of P dude. is my three. Which one is three? Lies of P. Lies of P is your three. Yep, 100%. It's one of my favorite games in the last like five years. Three chips on three, so you got a two chip and a one chip left. Two chip for Shenmue 2. I just don't like it as much as number one, and that's part that's by design, though. Mm-hmm. You know, Rio, Rio is a fish out of water. He's in another country. It is a, it is like a very anxious game, you know? Yeah. It, it kind of stresses me out, whereas one is so cozy. And your one chip, Huber. Uh, Sleeping Dogs. Sleeping Dogs. Hell yeah. Love Sleeping Dogs. All right. Uh, my three would go to Mist 5. Okay. 
Is Mario Party Superstars the good one? Yeah, that's the good one. I get that's my two. Great okay. one. <laughs> Great game. And then I'll give my one to Shenmue 2 just for humor. <laughs> <laughs> nice. No Though use. I've heard Gravity Rush 2 is amazing. It is. Gravity Rush is so... Oh, I forsook Gravity Rush. It hurts. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, this is rough because I played I'm one but not two. I'm so sorry, Gravity Rush. Damiani. Damiani's going three on Gravity Rush 2. Yep. Yep. Three yep. Cups there Gravity is, Rush there 2. Is. Yep. We knew. Two, the Hell lies yeah. of P. Ooh. And then... Dealer's choice for the last chip because I can't decide between. Just them. throw one down. Throw one down. Eight. Mist was pretty good. Throw <laughs> one down. I have like equal disinterest <laughs> in the rest of the games. <laughs> Even Mario Party. Well, they give it the snipper clips because of the. That's not the. I think you get like I don't what like that Mario Party. What about snipper clips? No, I like the that legendary. That no, this Mario Party is good. You're oh. thinking of Super Mario Party, right? This is the good one. Yeah, Superstars is the. No, oh, the good ones are the, the good ones, ones yeah. are two. No. But this three. one is contained. No, Damiani, yeah. no, seriously, Damiani, this one is like the best Mario Party. As a fanatic, I like it more than like one and two and three. This is the culmination of Mario Party, dude. Straight I'm, I'm up. up. Make sure it's, it's the newest it is, it is one. The one it's that's the basically new one. Super Mario Party. Yeah. It's the newest one. This is the yeah, newest Yeah, we played all the time. One. He hates it. But, like, it has barely any boards. I mean, every Mario Party no only Mario has Party five has boards. Than, yeah. There could be, like, six or seven. Yeah, I do think that's cool. a fair criticism. They should fair. come out with some DLC microtransaction right. boards. Yeah, they have, like, problems <laughs> never giving us DLC. Yeah. So it's like, why would I... You yeah. should be able to pay $2. And Huber always wins it, so I don't know what's <laughs> right, 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 right. always You should wins. be able to pay two ninety nine to re-roll your <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I should. That's the perfect time to announce microtransactions. I would do it. I when Uber's winning, so I could buy some more stars. <laughs> <laughs> One more chip, Danny. Honey, where is it? Uh, I don't even have a randomizer. Shenmue nice. two for you. <laughs> Hell of a game. Okay. So, like one was ambitious. Two was next level ambition. Okay. 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 So glad we got that remaster of one and two. So fantastic. We can just boot that this up. This is anytime. tough because it's like, yeah, do I limit myself to things that I've played or I find it hard to vote for something that I haven't played at Hologrades. Even if I know its reputation. Right. It's tough. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> you always bring shit on me. I haven't played that one. <laughs> Uh, I think I'll do <laughs> two for Liza P. Fucking love Liza P. Oh my god, Liza P. Damn it, why? Liza P. Maybe this time. God. That's gonna be the next thing that makes me pop off. By the way, <laughs> like when we see that DLC or sequel. Next time I see anything new for Liza P, I am popping off, dude. Lies of Q. <laughs> I'll do three for Sleeping Dogs, and then I'll, I'll, yes, I'll also do one Sleeping for Shenmue Dogs. 2. Sleeping Dogs. So I think dude. that gives us Shenmue 2 and Liza P, uh, with Liza P getting seven and Shenmue 2 getting five. Sick. <laughs> Sounds good to me. All of eights. Fantastic. Is this missed five eight? <laughs> yeah, I, I thought so, but I don't know what the hell's going on. What the hell trailer. is this? I don't know. <laughs> Is Chad even seeing this right now? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Insane. I don't remember. This I've played every single Mist game. I've beaten right every Mist game, and I it's have no like, memory of this. It's like an Econo Blizzard cutscene. <laughs> 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 All right. From DJ Riboflavin. Hello, allies. I'm a bit late getting to this game. Uh, but I recently started playing Assassin's Creed Mirage. Nice! I have fond memories of the early titles in the series, and I'm enjoying how Mirage returns to the style of Assassin's Creed 1 and 2. Unnecessary slander for Mirage. Let's get that across right now. People were, like, weirdly hard on that game. Mm. Dude, Mirage is sick. Mm. Uh, while implementing new ideas and utilizing design elements from their new installments. It's not perfect by any yeah. means, but I never thought Ubisoft would go back to this formula with Assassin's Creed, and I'm absolutely here for it. Are there any other developers you'd like to experiment with this approach, either using a long-standing franchise that has evolved over time, 
or an older IP that hasn't had an update for years. For example, I know it will never happen, but I would love to see what Naughty Dog could come up with, with for a new Jack and that Daxter. That was my pick, damn it. <laughs> uh, I think Jack 2 or 3, but made with the resources they have now compared to 2004. Yeah. I imagine a huge open world sandbox, extensive weaponry, more depth with racing and the hoverboard, etc. It would be har- a hard pivot from The Last of Us, but it might also be a way to mm. let loose for one game. I mean, I always bring it up. I would really love if Capcom would make a new Onimusha. And it doesn't need to be this like insane, hugely ambitious thing. Like, make it small scale. Mm. Like, even if you want to like continue with fixed cameras, even like really small, just bring it back. Like, it doesn't need to be like the Resident Evil remake treatment, is what I'm saying. Like, I would want that, of course. Right. Good grief, I would want that. That's a dream. But even if they wanted to just do like something small with it. Man, they just did this with Prince yeah. of Persia with the Lost Crown, like reinventing it. So, I mean, uh, some of the ideas that came from a discussion I had on that was uh, Mega Man. Yeah. I mean, it's already done. Uh, the ZX uh, entries were Metroidvania. I, I don't understand why Capcom can't just get someone to step in and make a new Mega Man game that's not a classic one, but an X or advanced one that or a series beyond that that's just. Metroidvania, Omega Man. If they're if they're just struggling to come up with a new direction, just embrace that. Don't say that word. In, That's a forbidden going word. Anywhere. <laughs> or, or, or a roguelite, a roguelite for Mega Man, yes. man with the power ups, yes. dude. Like the boom. Uh, yeah, yes. there you go. There's your magic. Like it's, sign me up. On. Right. <laughs> man, I'm just having a hard time trying to think of one that actually. I mean, you got F zero ninety nine blood. You're hyped. Yeah. Yeah, content updates live. Content update, dude. Where you at? <laughs> um, yeah, well, I mean, I guess it's weird because it's like going. It, it's because like going back doesn't necessarily make sense, but you know, like burnout is like one. Burnout. That's good. It's like a good like stage based burnout rather than giant open world. Sure. Because it's like I, I guess in a way like the Need for Speed yeah. games in a way now are bur- sequels to Burnout Paradise. You're so right that you like know? that formula has become the norm for so long. Yeah, you're so right. So that would, that would be nice. Don is not is still not here yet. Damn it, Don would be all about that. <laughs> He'd be all about that. Bloodworth. Isla, you have any anything? To go back to the old formula that's that's kind of evolved. Uh, I stepped out to have a research break, so I missed the question. You missed question. the question? Yeah, it's basically, uh, they're talking about Assassin's Creed Mirage, going back to the original kind of idea, design, oh, rather okay. than the roots. giant open world RPG-esque. So if huh. there's any other franchise like that that you would think, hey, step back to what we are doing before. I mean, dang, just give me a new Castlevania game. Yeah. Yep. Classic pixel art Castlevania game. That's been all over the place. Absolutely nailed it. Like, it's insane (laughs) when you really think about it. How long it's been, like, gone. And so... Like, Lords of Shadow 2 was, what, a a decade ago at least? Yeah, it's been a long time. My God. And not only that, but it's like, there are so many companies that would be great for that so in so many, many different directions right it's I, like, and, and people that like call it out online like companies that have been like hey let us make a new one but yeah yeah, yeah. god <laughs> all right it's time for bets uh this week bet this week's bet uh there's not it's funny we just went over all the stuff coming out in the next three months but actually next next week not a lot of big stuff uh but there is that ign first Revealing Mm -hmm. uh, from Yellow Brick Games on the second. So I'm going to check out that IGN first. I'm going to check out whatever article they put up, whatever video they put up, uh, everything that IGN is putting up on April 2nd. I'm going to go through that stuff and I want to know how many times I'm going to find the word adventure. Huber. Six. Six adventures. Damiani, the pompous cocker spaniel. Seven. Seven. <laughs> right up there. Isla, the wet hummingbird. 
I would, I would, I would way too high, dude. 32. 32. <laughs> 32. I mean, action All adventure right. is a genre for I sure. I mean, I hope. I was hoping that they put up like several things, but I forgot you've said just one day. So I was like, oh, wait. <laughs> yeah, because they are going to be probably putting stuff out there like over a couple of weeks, but. Yeah, that I, yeah. Just the one day for this. Uh, Don's not back yet, right? Don is not here yet, no. Okay. Two. Gabby, optimistic rat. 15. That's a good one. That's 15? Good. Pretty, yeah, pretty good. Yeah. We have no bad, idea. Bad, bad. Like, we have any idea. And then I'm in the low with four. Damn it. Fucking Damn it, blood. <laughs> Were you looking, dude? No. <laughs> Were you looking at my bet? Why would I be looking? Did you look at my bet? <laughs> no. No matter what. No. I heard a bang bang. I want to check. <laughs> I heard a bang bang. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Damn it, Tommy. <Tommy-Oni. laughs> No matter what he says, it's opening day. I got, I got to make the reference. Uh, last week, <laughs> by the way, they the loss. Uh, last week's bet was about Princess Peach Showtime. Oh, right. I asked how many enemies would spawn between the start of the game being playable and Peach's first <laughs> transformation. Fun one. Why did you emphasize enemies like that? I don't know. Oh, okay. Huber said seven. Damiani said twenty-five. Isla said 62. <laughs> Don bet zero. When that transformation right off the bat. Gabby said four. And I said 38. The answer, before you get that sword fighter, is 12. Makes Huber the winner. Bringing oh, our scores it. to Stealthy Centipede, six. Pompous Cocker Spaniel 3. <laughs> and Effervescent Hippopotamus 3. <laughs> Let me talk about patreon.com slash easy allies. Uh, if you've been enjoying this show, uh, this is uh, all made possible because of generous people just like you. Uh, yes, we we are we're putting out fewer things, but maybe more things than we anticipated. Uh, but it still takes your support to have even this uh, happening all the time. Uh, there's been uh, some really cool stuff lately with the the spoiler mode going up. We just did a preview today, mm-hmm. uh, and then yeah, just like just just the show itself. There's a lot that goes into uh, putting the show together every week. Uh, so thank you to everybody who contributes to Easy Allies to keeping this thing yes. going. Uh, and love you. Uh, if uh, you become a patron, we got all kinds of different things there for you. At five dollars, uh, you get this podcast early. Uh, you get it ad free. You get bonus love and respect questions. You get to put your questions into love and respect so we can answer them. Uh, you get in our Discord where you can vote in our top tens, uh, and they just wrapped up those uh, battle themes. So we'll be going over nice. that next week. Sick. Um, and uh, revealing what the next thing is as well. Uh, at ten dollars, you get to uh, vote in uh, our stream teams. So one 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 time every month, uh, we do something that you voted on for group stream. We also have our community showcase, and then twenty five dollars up are our producer tiers. Uh, we've got fan mails that need to go out tomorrow, mm-hmm. everybody, uh, mm-hmm. for fifty dollars <laughs> and up. I just sent uh, Jones's golden voice Hype. for Snargle Gold Claw. Snargle. Bradley Spees has some reading romance fiction from Guild Wars 2. Every month I get to hear this stuff. It's so amazing. Good. It's so good. Uh, and then our platinum producers get a shout out on this podcast each and every week. This month's shout outs go to Jabawebs, Elthanis, Greg the Dark Knight Kettering, Raymond Wheeler III, and Forever Ender. Shout out. Shout out. out. Wow. Shout out. Yeah, I actually just threw away some of those promotions early. But yes, the spoiler mode with Max. Check that out. Uh, for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, the Visions of Mana preview went up this morning. Talked with Damiani about that. I got to play about 45 minutes uh, at Square Enix offices uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, and then uh, we're having our eight-year anniversary celebration on Tuesday. Uh, so we're going to be playing a lot of games there. We're also going to throw in Stream Team and Community Showcase and Hall of Greats. Uh, so there'll be a lot there. I 
don't think any of us have picked a hall of grades yet, probably. Nope. So we'll have to, Dragon's have to Armor 2, out. baby. Oh, Dragon's <laughs> Armor 2, dude. I, I, you got my vote. You got it's my whoever vote. Tells For $2.99, it. I will give you my vote. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, that'll be a good time. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe we'll throw in some Outlast. <laughs> Maybe we'll throw in some Oh, Outlast Trials, please. Bot Fight Club. It's so fun. Yeah. So That is like my my feel good hit of the year so <laughs> far is Outlast Trials. Uh and then Huber, you get to shout out anything or anything that's on your mind this week. You get the final word and you get to sign off with your trademark. Sign off. Anything that's on my mind? Check out the uh, check out the Dragon's Dogma Two review. Woo! Uh, I put a lot of love and care into that. Uh, so you put in a lot of love and care it's, into it's it. It's team, all our team effort, and team blood, effort. blood as well. Put a lot of love and care into that. So check that out. Damiani, but, you know, there's big no, emotional support too. Thanks, Damiani. <laughs> <laughs> there's no uh, microtransaction uh, Gabby did section the short, in the there. One minute. Gabby did the one minute short. Gabby did really the good, shorts. really good. Full, all hands on deck, <laughs> truly. Except for that slacker, Don. <laughs> <laughs> um, what, what is it? What is it again? Final word. <laughs> final and word. then sign off. Um, the final word is not Every situation is the same regarding microtransactions. Like it, it like <sighs> this shit just gets me so it gets me so emotional because I just I feel like th- this game is just made with so much love and and it has such a vision and it it just is a it is a work of art and it is a work of passion and it it doesn't hold your hand and i just feel like this unnecessary conversation has sucked a lot of the air out of the room regarding yeah. this very special game like so many games especially in the triple a big budget open world space they all have those modern conveniences and they follow that formula a lot of the times to a T and Dragon's Dogma dares to be different it dares to be bold so shout out to Dragon's Dogma and the final word is also related to that don't sweat the small stuff I agree, Bloodworth. That's the best thing you've said all day. The Easy Allies would like to thank our Patreon podcast producers. We apologize in advance for all the ally names we are about to misspell and mispronounce. Jabawabs. El Thanis. Forever Ender. Greg the Dark Knight Kettering. Raymond Wheeler III. Bradley Spees. Jay Shee. Jesper Popmel Dufay, Roy Sung, 44 Stars, Alexander Zirianov, Andre, Aurelien Grenier, Beaten Down Brian, Brandon White, Brian Kruger, Colton Piccione, Daniel Martinek, DBA, Dimitri Zidis, Douglas Chomich, Faraz Rizvi, Garrett Holfish, G. Levin, Hayden Hargraves, Jesse Blue, Jesus R., Kroldemort, Matthew Pauling, Miguel Rivas, Mo Grant, Paul Sway, Ronka Q, Robert Stoffel, Sage Mode Q, Sam Hendrick, Sigma, Stomps, Stepan Hakobian, The Banana Forklift Killer, Chum Nguyen, Ziggaz Each, Anish Dor, Aaron Haney, Accounts Payable, Adam Henry, Alex Monaco, Alexander Sheck, Anna Croft, Anthony F, Anthony Galvin, Anthrioni, Antonio Coyne, Arthur Lau, Ostiel, Austin Kruckmeyer, Barry Tomasini, Bob Starling, Brian Foster, Bunny Chen, C.S. Lewis, Katie Garza, Carlos Delgato, Cassandra McKee, Chief Uhu, Chris Eccles, Christopher Santis, Clay Roberts, Colin Montot, Connell Sumlin, Corey Jackson, Corey Landega, Crum Eyes, Culinary Stud, Cyberboa, Dan Sebring, Daniel Kozlowski, Daniel Wong, David Aniki, 
Edison S. Prada Jr., Enya Hink, Eric Tobias, Eric, Aspen Gotchman, Ethereal Ether, Felipe Barbosa, Fishflop, Forest, Project, Gabriel Aberg, Gabriel Smith, Jen Woofels, Gino A. Leet, Gustav Strombaum, Harrison Holt McHale, I. Sun Chor, Ian Anderson, Ivan Swade, Jack Forrest, Jan Nicholas Frogshirt Tilk, Gerald, Jesse Fish, Jesse Wilkerson, John McCullough, Junya Motomura, Carl Williams, Keegan Boyle, Kevin Gillet, Leith, Leon Keyes, Linson Wu, Lister, Luis Ibarra, Lion Crown 19, Marco Hernandez, Materia Addict, Matthias Clare, Max Miller, Mazrim Tame, Megadet, Miguel, Mr. Anarchy, Nefertiti Jenkins, Nycrypt, Nick Hill Sharma, Ninja Kitty Meow, Ono Turtle, Orugachino, Pablo Rodriguez, Patrick Held, Pete Shoemaker, Pixelated, Pojo TMC, Pulp Head, Ray Aldiar, Reed Johnson, Richard Ma, Ritz 1906, Robert Seven Lee, Robin, Ryan Rutger, Salvers, Samuel Copeland, S.D. Prima, Sebastian Trier, Servino, Sean Johnstone, Sito, Sneaky Gato, Splontot, S Snake 24, Steps, Stone Soup VT, Strikeout NZ, Sultab, Tadashi 047, Taffy 9K, T Beaks 15, Tim Strothman, This Is My Username 1466, Tomovi Kioni, Travis Ng, Trizak, Wouter DeHaze, Yami Zetsume, Zach Wojnar.